Welcome to my retreat. Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit closer. I'm a little bit closer to the camera. Fair warning, you might see me a little bit closer, a little bit clearer. I apologize in advance. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. As I cut myself off, welcome back to myself. Thank you. Thank you. Yay! You're too kind. You're too kind. Oh, it's been a nice little break away from the internet. Well, I've been on the internet. <laughs> Let me not lie. It's been a little break for myself being on the internet. You know what I mean? I've been on the internet, but I have I have not been on the internet for at least like 30 days or something. And it was unexpected, uh, but very, uh, very nice. Nice little break. I needed it. I needed some time to reflect, <laughs> to chill, to relax, to enjoy my European adventure, and then to enjoy my return to America COVID, and then to return to my uh, week or, you know, vacation slash sickness returning to work catch up session. And then, you know, I needed a break from that. And then here we are. That's like five weeks, right? <laughs> That's about the amount of time that I was gone. Um, if you didn't know, I met Camelia in person, Camelia Kazan, from the famous YouTube channel, Camelia Kazan. Uh, and if you are a super fan of both of us or, or me or whoever, um, then you will know she's from Cringe Fluencers, uh, which is it's still on hiatus. <laughs> It's still in hiatus, and we will let you know when it's not uh, on hiatus anymore. But um, if you are, you know, embedded into the anti-MLM lifestyle, (laughs) here, um, this is her. And I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want it to be, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't tell anybody. I guess I could have. I wanted it to be a surprise that we were going to meet each other uh, in real life, IRL. And, um, And that's what we did. So I went to... Europe and Cam lives there already. Oh, thanks, Angela Arnold. Wow. Oh, wait, hold on. I have the sound bites geared up and ready to go. You okay. are privileged oh. AF. Yes, I am privileged AF. How does that sound? Does it sound good? Does it does it work? I am dating oh, okay. the most Colts. evolved human being. Yeah, sure you are, Rachel. Um, so thank you, Angela Arnold. That is very, 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 very oh, okay. kind of you. And welcome everybody who's becoming a member. Hey, and one more thing, one more sound. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay, so I'll show you too. Let me show you the photo. Just this is just a little catch up. Like, what have you been up to? This is what I've been up to. Traveling the world, guys. Oh, okay. Um, I will say it ain't cheap. It ain't cheap out here in these streets. And by these streets, I mean the European streets. But I tried, we both tried. I mean, like I said, Camelia lives not, I guess, I don't know. She lives in England. I don't know if that's even considered what that's considered anymore. I don't know if they know what it's considered. But here we are. Oh, wait, I have no time about this. Oh, guys. Oh, wait, I don't have the all. I just have the... The laughter. <laughs> Look how funny we are. This is our presence. Oh my gosh, it's too, too long. But yeah, so uh, so we tried to keep it. You know, we didn't do hostels like like that. Okay. We did Airbnbs cool. and uh, you know little hotels. But you know, we did the splitsy thing. We did the 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 lower end stuff just to keep it within reason because it does okay. add up pretty quickly with flights and trains and. Automobiles. I, I don't think I was in an automobile at all. We only took trains. And uh, I will say I loved it. I loved being able to jump on the train and go to another country or jump on the train and, and get, you know, the best pasta you've ever had in your life. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this was part of our experience. This was Monaco. And uh, we did not plan to go to Monaco, but it was very, very close to Nice, France, which is where we were staying. And we we're like, let's jump on the train. There I am. There's me. Oh my God, guys. Also, um, I curled my hair today. Who am I becoming? Or am I becoming who I was before (laughs) and now returning? Um, And what else? Here's another one. This is a pose that I do on like every vacation I go on. 
just to keep it consistent, just to see how unflexible um, I still am at every trip interval. Uh, this is in Italy. There's Cam. Oh my God. Hey girl. And she might be here. Uh, she's coming. She said she promised. I was like, you promised to come tonight and you didn't. Uh, no, she's supposed to come pop in the stream because she's working on her dissertation. Crazy. Uh, so she needs a little breaky poo. There we are. We're climbing. We were, we were hiking up a storm, hiking the entire peninsula. <laughs> Uh, but we, it was a lot of fun and very hot, but Florida is hotter. So it was, it was nice. And we took little breaks and there was like little restaurants at the top of these hikes that had like the best cheese and you know, whatever you wanted. It was so good. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, okay. Gorge. I mean, this was just like a random, not random. It's like a famous place, but <laughs> it's just, you know, <laughs> Just a night out, walking around, no plans. We're just like seeing the sights and oh my God, look at this sunset. Uh, and thank you, not Jenna Cash. Thank you, thank you. Not Jenna Cash says, welcome back, bitch. <laughs> Been lost on Thursdays. Me too. It's not even Thursday. It was like Friday. I couldn't even get, I was like, okay, this week it's going to happen. I'm going to get back. And then, uh, and then it just, you know, the week got away from me, but I was like, no, it's going to happen this, this week. And today's the last day of the week of the weekday. So here we are. Um, I've been trying to go to yoga again. <laughs> I know. And I've been going on Fridays um, because it's the easy class. <laughs> but I was like, you know what? I'll go next week. I'll go next week. It's fine. So Jenna, not Jenna Cash. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is for you. And I just wanted to say it's very related to this moment. My father and I get sewn together. <laughs> That was from our one and only Brian Johnson, the billionaire, millionaire, trying to be young forever. And also, Jenna, this is for you also. If I were to die, it would probably be choking on broccoli. So contemplate that, okay? <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay, did I miss anything? Did I miss anyone else's um, thing? I saw something pop up, but I didn't see. Oh, let me open. Hold on. Let me open another tabby poo. And then I'll be able to see the chat in case there's any special messages that come through for some reason I can't see them. Sometimes that happens. So I will pull that up so I can have full access. Okay. Anyways, are you sick of seeing this view? <laughs> Here's another one. I'm just my last photo I'll show you. This is so cool. And uh, we didn't go out to any places up there. Like I need the, those are like houses basically. Um, but it was very beautiful and colorful and magical and wonderful. And these are all the little towns that we got to hike to. And if you have a chance to go and look, okay, I'm actually not that much taller than her. <laughs> I was standing on a step that made it look like I'm, you know, two feet taller than Camellia. And she's like this tiny, I mean, she is tiny and petite, but I'm not a giant compared to her. But look, a butterfly, uh, guys, a butterfly flew into the frame. You know what that means? You know what that means? That's our spirit guide. Our spirit guide's guiding us to show us that we are metamorphosizing into caterpillars in reverse. And there I am. They were on a boat. Camelia did not like the boat too much. She did it. She sucked it up, but she was scared of the boat. <laughs> and then here, Monaco, me, just, you know, making a little joke. Making a little jokey. That's what I do. Oh, wait, I already saw it. Okay, that's it. That's it. The whole experience, I think. Oh, wait, no. Here's another uh, shot. Gorge. Look at that. That was at the top of the hill amazing it's never as fun when you watch someone's instagram stories about a vacation you gotta go yourself i mean i like re-watching this stuff because i was there i'm like oh yeah i remember that time i remember that that place watching it you're like okay we get the point we get it anyways follow like subscribe bye guys no i'm just kidding <laughs> Uh, so that was what I've been up to. Like I said, then I got COVID immediately when I got back and then I stayed home uh, in isolation and then I worked from home and then, yeah, and now we're here. Um, so I figured I'd come back with a depressing stream. And also, let me just say, uh, I think I thought about it over the time I was gone. And I think the best way to do a stream, because previously I've done it two different ways where I watch like one video and just, you know, like a Rachel Hollis vlog or something. And that's all we do. Or we, you know, watch two videos. And I tend to like those better. 
because sometimes when I try to like cover a subject, like, okay, we're going to talk about Mel Robbins today and here's who she is. And this is what her thing and showing all of the details and like going to the website, it can become overwhelming. So for example, if you've watched the Miley Cyrus stream, I didn't know where the story was going and it was like kind of uncovering it live, but it does get confusing because I was confused at points like, okay, who is this person and what is this and this cult and that thing? So I figured let's just take it easy. I'm still working on doing edited videos. I say that every time, but I, I am working on it. Um, so I think, you know, the more deep divey stuff will be better suited in a edited video so I can like get through my <laughs> rambling thoughts and narrow it down. But I think we should watch full videos um, and just look at one piece of content at a time for streams. And that's what we're gonna do tonight. That's exactly what we're gonna do tonight. Um, so uh, we haven't talked about her in a little bit. I know a lot of other creators are, um, you know, they, they cover her <laughs> quite a lot. So you, if you're familiar with Jesse Lee Ward, you might already sort of be um, you know, familiar with what's going on with her, but I've sort of tapped out in the sense of talking about her much um, since we talked about her Columbia retreat and then the, the fact that she was diagnosed with stage four cancer. Um, she got diagnosed fairly soon after Dave Hollis died and it was a you know pretty heavy time for everybody, I think, that's like in this space and trying to navigate like, oh my God, like first of all, what's happening? And second of all, just kind of like, okay, so she's sick now, what do I do? Do I still cover her, talk about her? It's kind of weird. And I think there is an, a line that, you know, I sort of was like, okay, just let her do her thing. But I am interested to see where her story has gone since then. Um, she did a video with Craig, uh, that's gold straight up Craig. Where, here it is, hold on, stand by. This is gold straight up. And I was planning to watch that because that brings together all of the, the worlds, um, but he uh, deleted it. So I don't know. And I looked for it on his YouTube and there is something with Jesse Lee Ward on his YouTube, but it's not the one that I was going to watch, which is the one that it's just him and her talking. Um, so he got rid of it. I don't know why exactly, but if you remember, this is, this is Craig uh, and here's, a preview to that, but then the actual full video is not available. So not sure what happened, but I will just, just, this is just a quick little recap of, of the podcast. Look how distracted he is. And just this teaser, watch, just don't, for, don't worry about Jesse Lee. Just watch Craig for a second. I understand that. I don't understand people who say, I don't like the way my life currently is. I don't like the car I drive. I don't like the house when I live in. Back. I don't like how I can't donate. I don't like that. I have to say no to dinner with my friends and then they won't work extra. Oh, I've never understood that. Well, I didn't away accept again. stage four cancer. Okay. I'm like, yeah, I don't like this. I'm not married yet. I don't space. have kids yet. I haven't left nearly the legacy I want to live behind. I'm not done building this life. Well, eyes. I don't accept that. What do we do? We change. And then I got to work. How you do anything He's is how you do everything. Else. Just ringing very, very true at this point in time. We are all in or I'm all I'm out. Smiling and I'm and looking. all in. Showing people you can do things a little bit differently and your body uh -huh. can heal. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. He looks very invested in this conversation. So anyways, um, that was my intention. But, you know, this is gold straight up. Her charisma is straight up off the charts. Thank you, Craig. My, my charisma and everyone's charisma is straight up off the charts. Um, but we're going to have to make do and and watch an Ed Millette video instead. But, you know, Ed Millette is, is one of those guys who I've been dying to um, talk about in more detail and, and learn more about. He's the guy, uh, if, you, if you remember, um, where he doesn't believe in time. <laughs> He's like, oh, time is such a waste of time. I have, I, I just do whatever I want all day and I consider it multiple days. And so cavemen lived 200 years ago and they're idiots. And I've, I've hacked the circadian rhythm of my life. It's like, okay, sir, <laughs> whatever. Um, so we're going to talk we're going to well, not talk to him, but we're going to talk, hear him talk to Jesse Lee. And Jesse Lee is actually coached by Ed Millen. Ed Millen, of course, is a life coach, career coach, whatever. And they sort of have a thing 
together in the sense of like a partnership because um, they both come from MLM. He was from World Financial Group, I want to say, and he has a lot of experience with MLM bullshit selling crap. And Jesse Lee Ward, Boss Lee, is, you know, the number one MLM seller in the world, allegedly. Um, so they fit right together. So I have not watched this video. Um, it's an hour long it's from a month ago, and I just found, if you can pay attention to the, the text here, the title here, doctors say she only has months to live. Okay, um, I find that this is his, you know, this is someone he knows personally in his life. Like I said, she pays allegedly him a lot of money to coach her, uh, and they've known each other from before the diagnosis. I mean, I guess everyone in her life seems to be okay with exploiting this cancer diagnosis for their own uh, views. She had another guy who's uh, Eric Worre, who's like a big, you know, I'm going to teach you how to be rich because of your MLM, whatever. Um, you know, he was the one who broke the news about her stage four cancer diagnosis before she could even tell anybody and like felt like he's like, you know, share this post that I made for one prayer and like this to send Jesse some some good vibes and comment. And it's like, OK, so you're building your own engagement through your allegedly friend and you know colleague uh, cancer diagnosis, cool. And it seems to be like that's what's going on here with uh, Ed Milet as well. Uh, DC, thank you, DC. And DC is one of those people. If you haven't seen her channel, uh, she's covering you know Jesse Lee in detail. So she's got like the lowdown. And I will admit again, I've been sort of out of the loop. So I feel like I'm going to learn a lot um, here. But DC probably already knows <laughs> what's going on. Um, and DC says, "Stoked to see you back streaming. Thank you." Thank you so much. And I will say this to you, DC. Hmm, what will I say? I will say this. Are you freaking bonker pants? Look in the mirror tonight, guys, and ask yourself, are you freaking bonker pants or nah? And I'll also say this to you, DC. I don't do murder. That is not a thing I do. <laughs> Cue the laugh track, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, DC. <laughs> All right, so we're ready. We're ready to go. Um, and again, the last thing I heard with this, the last time we all checked in together on this story was that um, she was, Jesse Lee was sort of contemplating what to do um, as in terms of her treatment plan. I know she's hesitant about um, traditional methods like chemo and radiation. And she, she did go and have a surgery which removed some of the cancer, but it seems like that's, you know, there's more to, to her diagnosis than just like one surgery. Uh, so we're going to hear more about it and we'll see how Ed Millette handles this and, you know, exploits this because like I said, doctors say she only has months to live. Seems like a, a little bit of a, uh, crazy title to do for to, to make about someone that you personally are having on your show and know and oh, okay. claim Old. to care about but maybe she's okay with it uh welcome buttercup thank you welcome 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 and jlb nerdy it's gonna pop up in a second JLB, jlb nerdy says doordash sushi just to enjoy the stream too cheap to normally do this so we are celebrating you Woo! glad to see you are back thank you i ordered food to pick up before the stream thinking I'll eat and then I'll be good to go. And I oh, okay. sent it to the wrong, um, well, I ordered it at the wrong location. <laughs> so I'm going to have to wait until later, which is totally fine, but uh, hopefully it's still there <laughs> when I'm done, but we'll see. But uh, maybe next time, JLB Nerdy, maybe next time. I'm outside the Cheesecake Factory waiting for it to open. We'll do Cheesecake Factory Sushi, which, you know, sounds weird, but might be okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And enjoy. And I, uh, I'm i hoping that you uh, enjoy the stream as well <laughs> as your background uh, dinner vibes. All right. Um, okay. When this was filmed, I see a question just coming in. I'm not sure when it was filmed, but it was posted one month ago. So it is now... August 25th. So this was July 25th to the date. So one month ago. And it says she has months to live. So, you know, a month has gone by. Um, so there you go. All right, here we go. It's like I said, an hour, five minutes. 
I want you to imagine for a second. Let me know too about how the sound is, if it sounds balanced with me. Let me put myself down a little bit and put this up. Okay, here we go. Getting maybe the worst, most shocking news oh, of your life. Cold. Something that may end or take. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Take your life. You've all pictured that moment where you get a diagnosis. But what if that... Oh, Lindsay says, uh, welcome back to the internet land. Party in one month. Woo! One year. Dang, Lindsay. Yeah, you're going to be one year old on the channel. Dang. That's pretty cool. I appreciate it. Diagnosis was stage four cancer. What would that feel like? And also Buttercup. I see Buttercups. Thank you, Buttercup. Almost one year too. Dang. All you guys are going to be one year old. How's it feel? How does it feel to be a year old? Okay, let's go back. Sorry, everybody. I was talking over that. Let's go back. This is pretty, um, they're like, let's put some, some really, uh, we'll take the worst parts of what you say and make it uh, really pop in text. <laughs> what if you were going to die? It's like the woman standing right next to him. Okay, anyways, here we go. I want you to imagine for a second getting maybe the worst, most shocking news of your life. Something that may end or take your life. You've all pictured that moment where you get a diagnosis. But what if that diagnosis was stage four cancer? What would that feel like? Okay, the big teaser. Yeah, I woke up tired some days, and for sure I pushed myself past points of exhaustion in order to hit a goal, but I never thought anything was wrong. So I went and got these tests done, and I thought, I really thought I was gonna get the MRI back, and it was gonna be like, oh, look, I can brag about this, and look at these blood tests. Instead of that, it just came back, big red flag right in my stomach. Colon cancer's been detected. I was told I would be dead most likely in October. It put my whole life in perspective and boom. I say this all the time, I don't have bad days, but I have bad, I have bad moments. I am an intense person and I have been a control freak my whole life. So I've always- Such weird like footage that they've sourced from Envato Elements for this. Like, can they just show her on camera? Like, I don't know. I get it's like dramatic effect, but like, She's saying, oh, I worked really hard and they're showing the generic woman on a computer. <laughs> Just as a video professional, I always wonder what people's choices are editing. Like, okay, I guess I didn't really need that, but all right. I'm an intense person and I have been a control freak my whole life. So I've always been the person where when anything is bad, it's like, oh, it's no problem. I can work harder or I can make more money or I can find the resources or no matter what, I'm just not gonna give up. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. And all of a sudden I realized how completely out of control I was. Instead of worrying so much about things, I said, okay, well, there's a lot I can't control, but maybe there is more that I can control than I realized. Most stuff does not matter. And I wish more people would look at their life and realize that. The um, and also, I forgot to say thank you to Meg for also being 11 months. Uh, Meg says, glad you're back. So fun seeing you in camp. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, this is quite the long intro. <laughs> I thought it was much shorter than this. A lot of music and, and stock, stock video. Um, you know, the one thing I will say, this, this does remind me of the Dave Hollis situation in a lot of ways, only because... The messaging here is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. She's saying, you know, I wish people would take a look at their lives and I was very busy and I, you know, didn't realize that time is fleeting. But the entire reason as to her brand, the reason why she's famous, I guess you could say, or or has the business that she does is because of the opposite mentality and the opposite um philosophy, which is like push yourself as hard as you possibly can. The whole reason she even came up on this channel at all is because she had this retreat where she was bragging about forcing people, you know, against their will almost, you know, to go on this like overnight hike in Colombia and people were passing out and, you know, one woman had diabetes and they were kind of joking about it, how she could have died and it was no big deal. And how, you know, if you're going to, you know, whine and complain about being poor, then you deserve it kind of thing. That's been her whole brand. And it's like, she, you know, she's, she's sort of now, on the flip side and saying like, oh, it's all a mistake, which is sort of what Rachel Hollis and Dave Hollis kind of did after their divorce. Like it was sort of like, oh, well we change our, our messaging, but it's like, okay, but you're still relying on the fame and the platform that got you here, which is the complete opposite without denouncing all the things that you've said before. And I, I wonder if she's going to denounce or not. So far, it seems like she's giving good advice in my opinion or at least like a little bit more 
wholesome advice than just like work your ass off and never stop. And then you'll be happy like me. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Little stuff that drives you crazy. If it's not going to matter in five years, don't give it five minutes. The only things in life that actually matter are the stuff that makes you smile. Period. That's it. Do you like that was not a boss Lee quote ever. It'd be like, if you don't sell ketones, you have no purpose in life. That's what she would say previously. You love it. Are you happy? Okay. I'm going to skip ahead because it's got music and I feel like I'm going to get demonetized for it. And it feels like this is just clips that she's going to say anyway. So let's just skip ahead to the getting the news section. So let's go right to it. Everybody has that fear yeah. of, I've got cancer and it's stage four. It's metastasized. I want to know, because I, I, we've decided we're going to be very open today to affect people's lives. Yeah. Take us through how it even happened that you heard the news and then what that moment was like and what does it feel like in your life? And and apparently he's got some heart issues because when Dave Hollis, well, we found this out after he died, but when Dave Hollis had the heart issue when he was on the retreat with Ed and Heidi and Jay Shetty and the Bill Hughes and all of them in Napa Valley and Mel, Mel Robbins, um, I think it, that was in January of 2023 it was like a month before dave died um he had put after so after dave died then ed revealed oh i sent dave the name of my cardiologist uh because he had you know had to go to the hospital because of heart trouble and so i'm assuming based on that that he also has some sort of heart condition or issues or you know blood pressure problems or something so he's got some medical stuff going on so i wonder if he'll share his story too when you actually get that news. Yeah, so I think I never actually thought about what that would be like for me. Mm. I was 34 at the, I'm still 34, mm. but um, I definitely thought about it for other people or people that I loved or I watched some of my family members go through cancer mm. but and not die from it necessarily, but just kind of seen people get sick before. And I never actually thought about it for me or what that would look like. And maybe that's why I got sideswiped the way I did. And it, it really humbled me nearly, I mean, immediately it brought me to my knees. Uh, I actually went and did an M a full body MRI mm -hmm. and a gallery grail test because Tony Robbins said to in life force. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, also just because I thought I was in the best shape of my life. Which and you were. So I really was. I but she wasn't, though. I mean, kind of. Ugh, that's the thing. And she was bragging previously before she had the diagnosis. She said, you know, like, in my mind, famously or infamously, like, she's like, this is what a healthy body looks like. This is what health looks like. And she pointed to herself and she has her, like, her you know, tube top on. And she was very thin, you know, looked good, like, visually. But uh, obviously, that was most likely the result of her having a very, very, very serious illness that was undiagnosed at the time. So again, it's like, you were in the best shape of your life. Not really, not really. I mean, she was working out and then all of a sudden lost weight. That's true, but that's not because of her efforts, it seems, or to ketones or whatever she was selling. That okay. was because of most likely the cancer. So no, it, okay, but all right. I went on a health journey starting in May of 2022. Uh, I was intentionally losing weight. So, and it didn't feel super fast to me. It was 20 pounds oh, okay. or something in nine months. It wasn't anything crazy where you'd be like, oh no, some, you know, something's wrong. Yeah, but I think that is what it was. Um, and thank you, Kim Possible. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. And not Jenna Cash. She's only 34. Dude, thought she was mid 40s. Yeah, I knew she was 30 in her 30s because because I thought the same thing when I found that out. And not that she looks necessarily old, but sometimes there's this thing, and I'm sure people know, like when you, and I don't know if she's gotten a ton of fillers or whatever, but sometimes when you're younger and you get so much done, you look like you're young, but you look like an older person who looks younger. Does that make sense? Like there's a certain thing that you look at somebody and it, they've had work done. And it's like, oh, they must be 50. And they're like, oh no, I'm 30. I'm like, oh. You look great, but you look like you're older and just did something to look young. Um, so I was surprised. And I think just because of her star, let, her star status in the MLM community, I thought she was much older as well. So I was also surprised, Jenna. And for that, I say nothing. <laughs> nothing more to say. Okay, here we go. 
Uh, and now when I look back at some photos, I can see that I'm, I was a bit gaunt in my eyes. Mm-hmm. I was getting a little bit too sunken in. I was getting a little too skinny, but I felt incredible. Mm-hmm. And I've always been a top performer and, and high achiever. And I know a lot of these people listen to you. So I hope they mm-hmm. start saying, oh, gosh, maybe I should do some of these tests because, yeah, yeah I woke up tired some days. And mm-hmm. for sure, I pushed myself oh, okay. past Colts. points of maybe Thanks, exhaustion, Annabelle. if you will, in, in mm-hmm. order to hit a goal. But I never thought anything was wrong. Mm-hmm. So I went and got these tests done. And I thought I really thought I was going to get the MRI back. And it was going to be like, oh, look, I can brag about this. And look right. at these blood tests. And look at all this stuff. Because I had been doing blood tests quarterly for a while. Mm-hmm. And instead of that, it just came back. red, Big red flag right in my stomach. Mm. which ended up being metastasized lymph nodes. And then in my lower right colon area, right at the cecum, where the small and large intestine attached were, were tumors. And then mm. the gallery grail test comes back. I'm actually flying back from the Bahamas when, when we get that news, and it says, yeah, it's got colon cancer has been detected, and mm. then a colonoscopy and all this stuff. And it, it makes you realize how fragile life is. Mm. It makes you realize everything you thought you knew maybe wasn't true. Yeah. Uh, okay, but what? <laughs> That's important. Everything you thought you knew maybe not be true. Like ketones are good for you and make you go into ketosis in 24 seconds. And uh, any MLM product that someone shills is amazing. And you should just tell everyone that, you know, Monate hair products doesn't make your hair fall out. Like, what? Are we going to go into details? Are we going to really help people today? Because that's why we're being honest. I hope so. I'm open-minded. We'll see. I doubt that that's going to be discussed, but that should be because she's made a lot of health claims through her years of selling products. And I would like to see, like, are you going to maybe put a little bit of responsibility on that? Like, hey, I did all of the things that other salespeople told me and look at my situation. I doubt it, but we'll see. And it makes you realize how precious the people that matter really are, what matters and what doesn't matter. It put my whole life in perspective and boom, I mean, seconds. Mm. And it's, it's been a journey. Uh, you know this, but I, uh, I was told I would be dead most likely in October. Correct. They told me I would, there was, there's no way I'm going to see Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Why is he like, correct? Like, are you the doctor? Like, okay. How would, correct. That is what, that is what the doctor said i know that because i was there <laughs> like okay thanks ed um so obviously it's august so that's i mean this was shot in july so that date has not come yet um obviously so it's not like she's surpassed that at this time because we haven't gotten there in time yet um so it's not to say like the doctors were wrong obviously i'm here i proved them wrong it's i mean it could still happen i hope not but it could still um which I was just sharing this story earlier with somebody, but I was talking about how amazing you've been through all of this. Oh, and I said, I sent that text when they said me, since, uh, when the doctor said that to me to three people mm-hmm. and one was you and mm-hmm. you called me right away. Mm-hmm. And I remember right where I was and you're like, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You visualize the biggest Christmas and the lymph notes going mm-hmm. back and all this stuff. And, mm-hmm. um, which was super useful in the time, mm-hmm. but I had to make a decision between, uh, and I'm not telling anyone what to do, by the way, do what you feel like is right yeah. for you. Um, but to either do really aggressive forms of chemotherapy and potentially live two and a half years with no quality of life Mm. uh, or just attack it and and really learn how to heal every single bit of me. And that's the route that I've been taking. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, that's like an impossible choice. And I'm sure, I'm assuming here they're going to frame it as like, you know, traditional medicine, you get two years, it's going to be a shitty experience and it may not even work that much. Maybe you get two years of life left or whatever. I think is what she just said, or the alternative is do nothing and hope for the best. That's what I think she means there. As opposed to alternatively, I'm going to heal myself, you know, um, Louise Hay style by thinking positive thoughts and, you know, Good luck, I guess. It's, uh, but I also don't like if I was in that situation and those were the two options, I mean, those are two horrible options. But, you know, honestly. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I, I, I'm not into alternative treatments, but I don't, I, to hear like two years and you have to go through this, you know, traditional stuff and it's very painful and all that. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. Not everyone would choose that, honestly. And, you know, I think. I probably would just to 
try to do something, but it is, it, everyone's got their own, you know, individual choice and it's, it's impossible to choose in that situation. It just sucks. We're going to talk about easy. that. I want to go back to you for a second. So just so you guys know, um, this is a really intense woman. Um, <laughs> in fact, one of the most intense and driven people I've ever met in my life. And so when we met, we had met a few times. I want everyone to just have context for this. Jesse Lee and I had met a few times, like backstage at events. We'd cross each other's paths in speaking. <clears throat> and then it ended up that I ended up, she was in a group that I was coaching. And then we coached one-on-one. -on -one. But I remember when we, I did an event at my home and she came. And I remember thinking, my gosh, she looks incredible. Yeah. She looks different. I tell her all the time, I don't know if you're like my daughter or my young sister or what. But, you know, I have this affection for her. And, but I remember thinking to myself, she looks incredible. I mean, Again, like, okay, so she looks incredible, but in reality, it was weight loss, most likely from cancer. So what's the point of saying that? Like, oh, well, you know, she was sick, but she looked great. So it was worth it, I guess. Like, okay, what's the point of that? The best she's ever looked. Yep. Like, even if you see photos of her online, like, it was a major transformation. And I remember commenting on it, I think even to you and to the group of people, too, how great you looked. And then it was not that long after that this happened. Yep. And... I remember for me, it took my breath away because I'm thinking this is a beautiful person and their woman in the prime of her life at 34 years old and a million years, I was not expecting that phone call from you. What is it like when, what happens in your body? I think everybody would like, they fear this moment in their life mm -hmm. and you've now had, I think the some in an odd way the blessing of experiencing it, meaning that we're going to bless millions of people today that have never actually talk to someone live who's like my life is in jeopardy right now i had this amazing life i'm a millionaire i'm traveling i'm beautiful she had recently met a guy that she's super crazy about and wham in that moment does it does it take your breath away do you do you have a <laughs> flood of your life before your eyes i don't know to me as someone who's like you know done a lot of interviews in my life it seems very insensitive and i guess i'm assuming Actually, I'm assuming that they didn't discuss this in advance. Like, ethically, you know, can I ask you these questions? Like, what is the value of, of for a million people, let's imagine a million people are listening to this, right? What would I glean from my life to hear how scary it is to learn that you're going to die from cancer, most likely, from a person who's going through it? Like, it's, just, it's only for shock value. It's only for like, oh, I'm going to, you know, get her to cry right now on camera. It's like, it's kind of gross. Like, what am I, what am I other than feeling sympathy, which I already do? What am I getting from this question? It just seems like insensitive to like bring up someone's trauma just for the, the excitement of it, the views, the interview. What, what actually happens to you? I'm curious in that moment, what, what went through your body and your mind? I think everyone's different, but for me, it wrecked me. Of course. Really. You would never know like, being your friend. You're so strong. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I am, but I have a lot of moments. Like, mm. See, she's crying. Because like, the way he framed that question was so insensitive. It's like, do you need to bring that up again? <laughs> I have bad days, but I have bad, I have bad moments. Mm. Of course and she does. When somebody's going through something like this, it's like you... I am an intense person and mm -hmm. I have been a control freak my whole life because of childhood stuff and just mm -hmm. I was forced into leadership positions at a really young age. Mm -hmm. And so I've always been the person where when anything is bad, it's like, oh, it's no problem. I can work harder or I can make more money or I can find the resources or no matter what, I'm just not going to give up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, I realized how completely out of control I was. Mm -hmm. I realized this is not this is not just you slap a band-aid on it. Mm -hmm. And even going into surgery, you know, any I guess anybody who tell, who has cancer or is diagnosed with cancer will tell you this. You're so I was so hopeful. I look back at the posts of that day in February when I chose to have the surgery to remove part of the colon and, and the tumor and I remember that because she had a popsicle. She's like, hey, guys, I'm here and I'm going to kick cancer's butt. I'm not even going to say the word. You know, I'm not going to say the C word. It's no big deal. I'm getting this thing taken out and it's going to be great. Okay, eat my popsicle. That was the vibe. And I was taken aback by it. I was like, well, there, I mean, if you got to be a way, I guess that is a better way to be, I suppose. I mean, I guess if that's your true, you know, feelings in the moment. But yeah, I agree with some of the comments here that are like, you know, like you don't have to be strong to be a leader 
every second. You don't have to face cancer with like this like defiantness to to be a, a good person or to be a strong person. That is just not my opinion at all. I think being honest and being vulnerable and being scared is the obvious response here. And, you know, again, she was like in tears and I feel for her in that because it's like, he's asking her, like, I wouldn't think that you would, you know, you, you couldn't tell you were upset. Of course she's upset, you idiot. <laughs> like this is a life altering moment. And again, bringing it up in the first place is sort of annoying, but it's like, of course, of course she's a human being. Some uh, 30 lymph nodes surrounding it, which 26 had cancer mm -hmm. in it. And I remember making the post about just knowing, oh, gosh, I know that, they're, that the surgeon's hands are going to be you know, protected by God and I'm, I'm going to get out of this and it's going to be amazing and I'm going to show people you could. And no, mm -hmm. no, Jesse Lee, that's literally not what happened. Like what happened instead mm -hmm. is pathology comes back. It's 26 out of 30 lymph nodes. It's metastasized and we're staging you at stage four because it's in your throat, it's in your neck, it's in your stomach. Mm -hmm. It's like. Oof. everything you thought you can, could control, you can't. Mm. And it was especially frustrating because I was already on a health journey. Yeah. So then it's kind of this like smack in the teeth of, mm. you know, and I've, I, I've, I'm an emotional person anyway. The mm. first time we had that one-on-one -on -one kind of coaching thing, I'm, right. Right. I'm a boo anyway, right. anyway, but I like, I've never cried the way I've cried. I've mm. never been of course, so emotional about things. And you, you start learning you're triggered by stuff. You start noticing, even today I'm driving. The thing with this is, you know, I agree with her and I, I've, I have not been through her experience, obviously, but like, I think this is what everyone that, well, I shouldn't say everyone. This is what I wish I could get into the brain of people who push this self-help crap, this exact turn where it's like, that's what we've been saying <laughs> that you say, I get up at 4 a.m. And that's going to I choose joy for my life and I'm going to control every single thing. And you should, too, if you weren't so fucking lazy. It's like, OK, <laughs> there's things that happen that are out of your control. There's things that come up that make people who you're like looking down upon from your Malibu mansion that cause them not to be able to be boss babes and to be millionaires and to be high achievers that never make mistakes. That's exactly what we're saying. It's like, yeah, it's just, it's interesting how, you know, in a moment, like a crisis moment like this, when their face, like Jesse Lee's now being faced with something that's very scary, all of a sudden the messaging is like, that's what we've been saying for the, the whole time. It's interesting, I will say in LA and there's a sign about cancer why I don't know you know it's like <laughs> why is this stupid sign here mm. is why is it a theme in so many movies mm. things you don't under you don't think about until you're in a situation like this and then it's the loudest thing your RAS is so activated my yeah. reticular activating system it's like think of a red car okay what are you yeah. thinking of a red car every yeah. single thing it's, it's all over uh do and you I think, just do you think about do you think about like why is this me does that come up sure yeah for sure because mm -hmm. I felt like you said I was in, I'm in the prime of my life and I felt like, wow, I'm not married. Mm -hmm. I don't have kids. I texted you this too. Yeah. I'm not married. I don't have kids. I don't like, I, where is my legacy aside from all mm -hmm. these people I've helped in business mm -hmm. and you know, the lives I've changed through that. What am I going to do? I have, what is going on? Why me? Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking, you know, oh my gosh. Oh, well, actually it's powerful. This is actually really powerful. Okay. Sure. Sure. Why me? Mm -hmm. But then I actually started dissecting my life or things that happen to me. And I started realizing, okay, so if your body, everyone has cancer in them, by the way, like you can read this anywhere. This is not, this is not me trying to scare anybody. Everybody has cancer cells in them. It's whether they're activated. Yes, but also like, okay. Yeah, not she's not wrong, but it's like, yeah, like it's, it's like, oh, everyone has blood in them. Okay, well, some people have blood that you know is diseased it's, it doesn't yeah it's very of course it's in your body i guess already i don't know she's gonna make a weird point here i feel like turns into something that can kill you mm -hmm. okay so everyone should know that to begin with mm -hmm. everyone has gene mutations mm -hmm. it's the term it, 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 whether they turn on or not is dependent on your environment it's dependent on circumstances it's dependent on a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. well a bunch of gene mutations of mine have turned on mm -hmm. and the cancer cells in my body decided to turn on mm -hmm. okay so with that knowledge then i went okay well if i've helped to create this as weird as that might sound yes well then how can i heal from this wow. 
And that became really impactful. Wow. Shut up, Ed. God, he's contributed nothing but trauma and bad questions so far. Powering for me because I then made a decision that I'm just going to change everything. My whole life has to change. And I got a lot of clarity from that instead of worrying so much about things. I said, okay, well, there's a lot I can't control, but maybe there is more that I can control than I realized. And so I decided to feel everything. And I'll actually share something on this podcast. Nobody on earth knows, but it's happening tomorrow. So I'll tell you. Um, I would tell you anyway. But mm. yeah, forgiveness was one of my biggest things. I started reading a lot more about s- some of the ways things like this happen. Again, you know, why me? Why me? Why me? Well, I have not forgiven, even though I've said I've forgiven things. Mm. The anger and the grief. I think, I think this is also a way to feel. And I don't think it's narcissistic necessarily in the, in the, clinical sense I think that word is overused way too much but I think narcissistic in the sense of where we all feel like we're special um which I don't know if is narcissism necessarily it's just a human trait that we all have and I think it helps us stay alive and to stay living and trying to you know do stuff and you know get out of bed in the morning because why would we we all know we're gonna die one day what's the point you know that's sort of the opposite mentality if we think we're special or we are making a difference or contributing or maybe something cool is gonna happen one day that can keep us motivated so I think there is some of that in in all of us but I think when it becomes you know, toxic ish is when it's like, Oh, why me? Why me? It must be something I'm doing to myself because otherwise I would never be selected to have something. But it's like, of course, of course, everyone else, if someone got struck by lightning, why them? You know, it's like, we're all susceptible to things at any given time. People have, you know, brain aneurysms randomly or fall off a curb and die for no reason there's no oh well you know I should have known that I shouldn't have wear those shoes it just happens and I feel like this and this is very heavy in self-help it's this constant push to try to understand yourself and your the way that your environment is to try to make sense of it to then also control it because if you can control it then you are you know in control of the universe which obviously we know is not true, but it's more, it's a comfort blanket. It's like, ooh, I can turn off my cancer cells, you know, when I want to, and I can dream of a happy life. It's like, yeah, you can, but then this could happen. And I don't know, I don't know how to deal with that. I don't know, maybe this is a coping mechanism that it just happens, but I don't know. And the sadness and the trauma and all the stuff from my childhood that has turned, it's turned me into who I am in a business sense. So I'm not mm-hmm. mad about it, mm-hmm. but I have not actually released it. And I can say online and in my speeches and in all the stuff that I do, you know, oh no, I'm, I'm, oh, you know, that's in the past and I've released it and blah, 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 mm-hmm. all the right stuff to say. Yeah. But if I'm going to be real with your listeners, yeah. I didn't forgive mm-hmm. and I certainly didn't forget. Mm-hmm. And if you brought up a topic that really bothered me, I was the first to be like, yeah, let me tell you. You know, and that that's, not, you that's not useful. And so forgiveness. <laughs> that's also human nature. It's like just, <laughs> I don't know. That's uh, people who are like, I forgive and forget so I can heal myself. It's like, that's not really forgiveness either. That's just trying to keep yourself healthy. <laughs> so it's like, I'm forgiving you. I'm forgiving you for my own good. It's like, okay, is that really the point of forgiveness? I don't know. This has been one of the biggest things. And Yeah, why me? Maybe because I grew up in a super toxic environment and maybe because I didn't have the greatest nutrition and maybe because, you know, I put myself in situations of stress all the time because I liked it. I was I like achievement. Uh, But I also realized that, of course, it wasn't going to be a cancer where, you know, and there's no good cancer. So don't misunderstand me, but Mm -hmm. it wasn't going to be a cancer where you just cut it out. Yeah, it was going to be a cancer where it's aggressive, just like me. And me healing from this is going to show a lot of people a lot of amazing things. It's going to give a lot of people a lot of hope. And it's going to probably give people their control back over their bodies and their minds and and their lives. What are you doing tomorrow? You didn't finish that. Okay. So finish it. (laughs) And if it doesn't, then what? Everyone's going to feel like hopeless. (laughs) Okay, so for anyone who's already followed me on social media, I've written many posts about it. I've talked about it a whole bunch of times. Uh, I 
essentially had a funeral for my mom five years ago. My mom's alive. Mm. Um, but she put us through situations as children that just never made sense to me. Like, we were in danger all the time. And I don't mean like, oh, you're like, okay, so she grew up not with a lot of stuff. I mean, like, we were physically in danger a lot. Mm. And... uh and then there was a there were five it was five years ago at Christmas I went and saw her anyway you know because I was always trying to like okay like let me like you're supposed to have a mom you're supposed to have a mom you're supposed to forgive you're supposed to whatever and on Christmas um I'm not gonna cuss because it's cussing but um two times on Christmas Eve in front of all her friends she said she yelled at me that I was a stupid effing bit mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and uh and I walked out and that was just my final straw. I was like, I've got to set a boundary around this. Mm-hmm. I can't do this anymore. She makes me feel terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, she's drinking too much. I don't know if she's on drugs. I don't know. It was- I mean, not as extreme necessarily, but this sounds similar to my story. So pff, I relate, girl. Pff, it sucks. I, you know, I haven't done any sort of ceremonial ritual where I'm like letting go of my mother. But like, you know, I've been pretty open about that, that I've gone like no contact essentially a couple of years ago for similar reasons. Like I just, you hit a line, you hit a break, breaking point, or at least for me. Uh, I always do that. I always, I always start when I go start talking about myself. I'm like, you hit a breaking point. It's like, no, I hit a breaking point. <laughs> Excuse my language. I hit a breaking point and I disconnected. I haven't seen my mom in three years, almost, almost four years coming up. Not too, not too far from now, which is crazy. If you knew me before, like I was always seeing my mom all the time and trying and trying and trying like she's saying so I relate a lot but I do not think that would give me cancer I just don't think it's related unfortunately I just think this is a side story that is part of her life but does not have to do with what she's going through it's not her fault whatever happened is you know she's not like she's got lung cancer and she smoked 20 packs a day it's like you know this just happens it does we don't understand it yet like I I can't do it anymore Mm. And so I had a funeral for somebody I loved mm. and I just said, I'll never talk to her again. Mm. And when all this was happening, I don't know, again, cancer or mm. maybe any of these serious things that people are going through, it doesn't have to be cancer. Maybe it's mm. some kind of other, other disease or, or life circumstance. It, I have these weird epiphanies that come to me yeah, and they're just these guided moments of yeah. intuition maybe, or spirit or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call them. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's almost like the Holy Spirit's whispering. <gasps> There you go. I don't know how else to explain it. Mm -hmm. And I woke up one day. God, I hate these fucking... Sorry, I'm cursing now too much. I hate these podcasters, Jay Shetty, Ed Millett, Lewis House, that give nothing. They go, oh, what? Huh? So tell me about the product you're selling. Like, they just don't add anything. And yet they have millions of views. I don't get it. I don't understand. And And I went... I haven't even remotely forgiven my mom. Mm. Like I've cut her off, but I think about her all the time still. Like there is like there is a deep chord there. Of course. And um making me cry. So I I this this happened in Barcelona about six weeks ago. I wrote her an email. Mm. And I wrote her an email and I just said, Well, yeah, I haven't told anyone this. Mm. <laughs> um I said, hey, you know, hey mom, uh, I'm writing this because I need closure and I don't know if you do too. And I went through it and I came from such a place of compassion. Mm. And I just said I can't imagine being in your shoes and trying to do what you did. You were you were pregnant with me at the exact age I am. And you were a successful woman. She was a My therapist would say this is actually not this is like my personal take on this and I don't know what she's going to say. I'm assuming she's going to forgive her because like you did the best you could or there was nothing else you could have done and or actually, you know, like it's it's you it wasn't that bad that my therapist would say that's a bad thing to do um ultimately because it it devalues your experience a little bit it can um it's like your mom made choices to do that to do the things that she did and put you in those situations that you were in and you can forgive that but don't devalue it and go oh she didn't mean it she didn't she didn't actually do it or i you know making it a bigger deal than it is because that's part of the problem <laughs> that you've like convinced yourself for so many years that like, oh, this person's not trying to hurt me. It's like, yes, they are. Now forgive that. Like they did purposely hurt me. Now I can also forgive. That's what my therapist would say. I'm just saying that maybe we have different stories, but it sounds pretty similar, <laughs> honestly. And here's Ed Millette popping up here. What part of this interview resonates with you? Leave a comment. No. How about no? Heidi, 
Tell him. No. An assistant CEO at the National Academy of Sciences. Mm. She just was really bad with money. So we did not have anything, and it was just being, who knows where all the money went. So I guess you never really know that when you're a kid. But she was brilliant, and we just never had anything. And I said, I can't imagine what it would be like if me in this moment right now, as successful as I am, because I'm super successful, Mom. Mm. Like, I don't think you even know how successful I am. Because mm. I blocked her everywhere, so I don't know. I guess mm. you could Google me, but mm. you have no idea. Uh, if you told me, no, now it's time to have a family. It's time to settle down. It's time to, mm. to get married again and have mm. kids and do all these things. And take the parts of me that, I, that are just mine, <laughs> just mine, mm. and say, you, don't, you can't have that anymore. And so I, I just gave her compassion. I told her about, this is really deep. Someone's going to be mad in the family. I, I say this if they listen. But I, I kind of missed the point. I, I missed what she was saying there. I kind of got lost for a second. 14 first cousins. I have a lot of aunts and uncles. It's a big family. Tons of, there's tons of grandkids, great grandkids, all this stuff. Not a single person, not a single family member reached out. Mm. I talk to my big brother about it. Every, we talk every day. And aside from that, there's no one. And I even wrote in that email to her. I said, how could I expect you to be this compassionate, loving, kind, caring, super maternal, loving mother when no one in our family is like that? And so I just, and I told her, I thanked her for. Because that's what you needed. You can expect that. You should expect that from people. Even if they've had issues in their life, you should and you can. You can be disappointed, but you should always expect that because that's what we all deserve. It sucks. I, I feel myself like tearing up almost too because hearing someone talk about their mom, it gets me kind of like um, emotional too because also I, f I see myself in her in this moment and I feel like, don't, don't go down that path. Like just hold on to, I think when she cut her mom off, that was her strongest moment is like, she stood up for herself. She's got her own life. She's her own woman. She doesn't need her mom anymore. And that's hard to like, deal with and I think this diagnosis obviously has made her you know maybe not regress but like kind of like cling to things that she does, doesn't actually need to to live a fulfilling life but it's such a hard road I'm on it now it's hard and it sucks like ugh, god it sucks I feel for her things none of it was it was not an accusatory email the whole yeah. thing was loving it was my work ethics from you mm -hmm. my brains, brains are from brains, you yeah. My ability to pick stuff up, boom, and learn mm -hmm. it and just attack stuff is you. Mm -hmm. I know it's you. Mm -hmm. And I just gave her, I gave her her flowers mm -hmm. and I just said, you know, I just, I'm not, mm -hmm. I haven't forgiven you and I needed to send this so that I can, mm -hmm. so I can heal because I need to heal mm -hmm. and then move on. And she, and I never expected an email back. And the next day she wrote, uh, she wrote an email back and I read it at 2 a.m. in Barcelona. Big mistake. Couldn't sleep. <laughs> but, um, and it just said, I mean, I won't, the, the whole email doesn't matter, but the opening line is really powerful. She said, Jesse Lee, I don't need closure from you. I need my daughter. <laughs> and I was like, that's some fucking shit my mom would say and it would piss me off. <laughs> I feel, oh God, okay. It's a different situation than I'm in, but like, that to me sounds like a, not a great thing. Your daughter just sent you this heartfelt thing and that's all you send. And you're like, I need my daughter. Yeah, she needs her daughter, but you're not her mother because you're not, you didn't act in a mothering way to her. I don't know. Let's not go down this road too far, too deeply because I'll start getting upset. But like, uh, I don't think her mother deserves from what I can understand. And I see some commenters saying like she's being manipulative. I have no idea. This is just from like a, you know, I, I don't know the deepness of her. Like a Rachel Hollis thing, I could be like, you liar. But I don't know her enough to, to call her out. So you may be totally right. Um, but to me, that sounds like a manipulative mother that doesn't deserve her daughter's forgiveness, personally. Come on, you know, like, and it was just beautiful email she wrote back. And um, we chatted back and forth a couple of days. And I just said, and she even said, like, I would just jump on a plane and be anywhere you are. I said, well, right now I'm in Barcelona, headed to Germany tomorrow. So maybe don't jump on a plane today. But uh, I bought her a flight and she'll be in Dallas tomorrow mm. with me. So I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Sorry. I don't see a single tear in there, Ed. I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> I um... He's trying so hard to, like, poke his eye so something comes out. He's like, Sorry. You see that? I have emotions, guys. You know, everybody, you don't have to, uh, 
have a stage four cancer diagnosis to learn from her perspective and her wisdom. That's why I wanted her here today. You can start making these decisions right now. And that's why it's important to put somebody in front of you who is going. And it's like the mom couldn't have found a way to get in contact with her daughter. There's no way at all that she could have gotten in contact before she had to wait for her daughter to send an email. Give me a break. Give me a fucking break. Through this. Oh, okay. You're just such a remarkable cool. human. He's still he's still poking that eye, trying to get something to come out. Uh, thanks, Rebecca Romana. Hello, hello. Long time no see. Rebecca Romana says, Kia, hi, been so long. This is just what I need at LMFAO. JLW is just letting bad parents off. Yeah, that's that's my take too. My dad was an a-hole. The shit he went through doesn't excuse it. I'm traumatized too. I'm still nice. Yeah, it's very complicated. And I think this is where therapy comes in handy because I used to think like this is the right way to be like, oh, you should always forgive everybody and you should always, you know, defer to them. And they've had a hard life. And I agree with that. And you can have empathy without letting someone back in your life that is not there for the right reasons. Or or like someone said in the, in the chat, like my mom, I think too, like sees me as her daughter. That's it. There is no human being life that I'm living outside of her realm of, of understanding. She's like my daughter, which is, you know, my property, you you know, is disobeying me. That's the problem. Not that a human being, you know, that's out there, me is living a life that I don't understand or I don't agree with. And I need to get over that if I want to have a relationship with that person. But when you have trauma and you're, uh, you know, you have all these issues and it's like clouded and they're older and they don't want to get help. It's like, so I feel you. I feel you, Rebecca Romana. And, um, you know, this is not my take. And I, I, I also understand that she's got cancer. So it changes the things a little bit because it's like, you do have a limited time where you got to decide to, you know, make these decisions. So I get it. But yeah, I think there's, there's, this is not the universal way to be like ed is trying to make it seem like oh this is the way that millions of people can learn to be it's like no this is one perspective and there's other ones which is totally fine if she never talked to her mom from this point on okay um so yeah in my opinion so rebecca Ramana, thank you so much and also i'm gonna say just as a reminder to everyone listening tonight heidi let us know it's okay to cry Okay, we can all have a cry after this is over. Okay, here we go. Thank you. what's amazing about you and adversity like this is when you're special and you are special and all of you that are listening are special, when you get through something like this, it reveals the extra special in you. If you all went back and look at Jesse Lee's special. you're extra special. Five, six years ago, you'd just see this boss Lee, just badass woman. (laughs) And this is brought out, it was already coming out, but it's brought out these beautiful sides of your personality, of who you really are. And I'm so grateful that you did that, and I'm so grateful that people get to hear this today. Because most people live like they're never going to die. If you're listening to this, you're under the illusion. Most people are like, in your conscious mind, you go, I'm going to die someday. But you actually don't live like it. You actually don't. You believe everybody else is going to die, not you. And what I wanted to happen today with Jesse Lee, because she's so articulate as well, (laughs) is to actually make you really face this right now because she's facing it right now. And, and what would you do if you were facing it right now? Who would you call? Who would you make amends with? What could you be doing right now to to get healthier, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Let me just, uh, just to set the stage, just so you all know. She was in the health, the, the prime of her life and the healthiest she had ever been by taking MLM products. So She was doing exactly what she could have done. What could she have done better? This is a woman who's worth a fortune. (laughs) She's made seven figures for a very long time in Uh multiple different businesses, in network marketing, in brick and mortar businesses. She has 1.6 million clients worldwide, by the way, in one of her businesses, 41 different countries. She's one of the top female speakers in the world. And with all of that, she's telling you that her, her perspective has changed. She gets this diagnosis, you guys. She has the surgery, and the next day is our coaching call, and she's in her hospital bed with a laptop 
doing the coaching call with me. And that wasn't her only meeting that day. So are we celebrating this or are we saying that this is part of your problem and, and why you have the cancer? Like, which one is it? Because she's taken both stances and he seems to be celebrating it. Like, she's such a badass woman. She's she's overworked herself to the point of exhaustion, which we just talked about five minutes ago. But now we're saying it as like, this is her strength and her personality. She was in hot. She was in the hospital bed with a laptop. Like he's saying it like a proud dad. Like okay, but didn't you just say this is the reason why she has cancer? I, I don't believe that. But she's saying this is the reason why she developed cancer. Okay, but why are we like? Oh, but she's still from after surgery. Like still, you know, maintaining the problem. And it's such a thing that we should all emulate and really admire here. It's like, huh? Get your messaging right. I want you to imagine that. You got, what was it, 10 inches of your colon removed? So am I allowed yeah, to say 10 that? to 15. 10 yeah. to 15, plus this tumor, the whole thing together. And the next day, she's on a call with me. How you doing? She's pumping me up on the call. <laughs> she's pumping me up from the hospital bed. That's the type of extraordinary woman that we're talking about here today. But isn't that the problem? Again, like, take time to rest. Take, don't focus on things unless it makes you smile. Okay, spending money on a coaching call to trick more people into buying products is what makes you happy like what okay just start to ask yourself how would you respond how would you react and i want to ask you a couple of things and <laughs> i, I wouldn't want you do to that be honest with me and then i want to talk about some business stuff too sure. oh, are you afraid you're gonna die from this no and i don't think i feared what in the hell is this dude's problem oh my god that's all he's asked so far tell me how afraid you are of death tell me how it felt when you found out you're gonna die tell me if you were going to die you guys at home how would you feel like what what is this? she's right there this is a person and she actually is experiencing it. It's like so, she just said, oh, she, you know, I didn't, she didn't go into detail about it, but like she, she was mentioning like, oh, there was a sign, like she was out in the world and there was a sign that said cancer, or like a movie that has the cancer as the plot is like triggering for her. Okay, that is the, the level in which I'm sure that is upsetting to constantly think about, oh my God, my time, my clock is running out. I'm sick, I'm hurting, I'm in pain, whatever. This guy's gonna bring it up 15 times in like 20 different ways? What? Stop, stop it. For death anymore, like maybe I used to. Uh, you've heard it, everyone's heard it. Oh, you know, live like you're dying. Like you, I was you know, thinking you of that Tim McGraw you know, song. Yeah, 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 same. yeah, I was literally thinking of it about <laughs> 24 seconds ago. <laughs> um, see, we're so aligned. Yeah. Um, or, you know, they say, oh, every day is not guaranteed. Okay, mm -hmm. all of these things are true. Mm -hmm. But do you really realize what you're saying when you say that? Mm -hmm. The answer for most of you listening is absolutely not no. Mm -hmm. There's a million ways I've changed because of this. Mm. But when I say I'm grateful every day, and I used to coach people, oh, I do a gratitude walk every morning, mm. which I do. Mm -hmm. I have for years, right? Mm -hmm. It's just part of what I do. Or go in the afternoon and I pray out loud. You know, mm. it's all, I've taught all these things forever. Mm. It is different when you actually realize every day is not promised. It mm. is very different mm. when you go, oh, a full mm. breath. Mm. It's completely different when your stomach doesn't hurt. Because you take these things for granted. It's different when you notice True. how beautiful a sunset actually is or you, the, the way I am present with people now. And I was always good with relationships. Yeah. That's been one of my superpowers for a long time. Yeah. Now when I'm with people, it's, mm. it's quality time to a completely different level. Mm. And so it's not like this fear of dying it's, or thinking I'm dying. It's knowing that every moment is actually precious. And how much time can you how much good quality time and experiences can you cram into every day of every moment instead of just, I feel like most people are just these ships that pass each other. We, oh yeah, I hung out with so-and-so. Yeah, I spent time with Ed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw each other at that, that event or whatever. Mm -hmm. But did you, did you actually see him? But the other thing is too with this, like, yeah, okay, they're passing in the night, but there's also a monetary so according to her that she's paid him thousands and thousands of dollars to be in his presence like what is that about you know to me i'm always kind of turned off by that it's like so you want to spend your time paying someone to care for you like i i guess like you we have to sometimes like if that's your only option but does that seem like the most worthwhile relationships to spend time on or you have to pay to get that person to care it seems not like my top priority to be honest like i don't know 
Did you actually feel him? Did you pay attention to his energy? Did you actually connect? Did you did have he a real you? moment or was it just, oh yeah, I was there? Because most of us are every day, yeah, I was there. Yeah, I went to work. Yeah, I drove home. Most of you don't even remember how you drive home because it's the same routine over and over again. Like, I feel like I've realized that my, the Jesse Lee version 1.0, she's, she's dead. Mm. Who I used to be, she's gone. Mm. She has to be because mm. she's the one who created all this, this illness, this dis-ease, right? Oh, Do you my believe God. That? Yeah, a good question. Finally, do you believe that? <laughs> Please say no. This ease, okay, straight from the Louise Hayes book. Now, again, Louise Hay, there was no evidence that she actually had any cancer that she cured herself from. She just said that in a book one time, and everyone believes it because they want to believe it. But again, like, you know, I don't know what the alternative is to, to her situation. Like, were the doctors saying that there's a great chance that if you do what we say, you can be cured of this you just have to go through some hardship or was there no hope and so you might as well do whatever you know I see some of the comments are saying like it's the narrative is fitting in um to her own you know she's telling the story so it fits into what she's chosen to do and that might very well be true I just don't know enough about what actually has gone on I watched one of her other videos today about you know the diagnosis and it seems like a lot of the doctors have been pretty forceful with her about like you have to be aggressive with this or it's not going to end well and she's sort of wanting to take her time and do alternative treatments and whatever and that seems like the wrong move but again it's her life she can choose to end it if she wants to so you know it's not up to us to decide for her and I do agree with that it's like you gotta you know it's your body your life your choice uh, yeah I want to ask you a question about that by the way what you're saying is just absolutely brilliant and it and you are no, smart it's idiotic but Sorry. you aren't this smart and this is the holy spirit speaking through you yeah. this is infinite wisdom i say all the time that Shut the fuck when we up. pray or we talk to whoever you believe in you're talking to god or your maker he's like you're smart but you're not this smart because <laughs> you're a woman <laughs> or whatever you're smart but you're not this smart to literally quote a louise louise hay book this is god and he's a man <laughs> that's who's speaking through you right now and when you get this infinite wisdom, this discernment, <sighs> this intuition, these words that aren't yours, that's God speaking back to you. It's from a book, and idiot. that's what's happening with you. And I, uh, I'm just curious, do you, do you, would you change something in your previous life? Meaning, was going for it like you and I have gone for it in our life, all it's correct? <laughs> He had, to add, he had to add himself in there. He can't even give her one ounce of credit in the sense of like, you know, you went for it. You were very aggressive and, you know, successful in business. Like we, both of us have gone for it. <laughs> Can she have one thing for herself? No. Okay. That to be, because let's just be real. Part of the success you've built is affording you the, the way you're being treated right now. We can be Which you super have gone open for about that yeah. in a little bit if you'd okay. like to. I want to do that. So I want to, I want to ask you first is, now that you're you're 34, you've got this mm -hmm. diagnosis. So, and by the way, she was literally told um, you won't be here for Christmas. Mm -hmm. She was literally told that. Which, by the way, nice doctoring. By the way, nice medical bedside manner, which okay. we'll talk about in, a, in another part of the interview. So they should they should not give her a prognosis. Like, I mean, I guess yeah, it could be nicer, nicely delivered. But I've also heard that she's been sort of not in denial, but not wanting to hear the truth from her own account like she's like i don't want to be told this information of course no one does so is that why they've turned up the dial and tried to tell her like this is very serious as opposed to like oh this doctor's just an asshole like okay ed whatever you coming up having said that though would you still have gone for it like a crazy person but maybe enjoyed it a little bit more or do you feel like some of the accolades and awards and all that was overcooked and i'm really curious because i'm still that guy too who's like i'm going mm -hmm. my intuition is i should be going but i should be a little bit more of an observer and be present as i'm doing it because i absolutely relate to what you just said about i was there but was i there yep it's, you know? it's what you just said so it's I don't think I would feel as fulfilled as a person if I could look back on it right now and go, oh, gosh, I really should have done more because mm. I really feel like I've been 
all gas, no brakes yeah. for a long, long time. Yeah. And I'm super proud of my accomplishments. And I look back on things like, wow, I'm really glad I did that. I'm so thankful that happened. I'm grateful for that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Wow, thank goodness I said yes. But I was also a yes man to everything. Mm-hmm. So thank this you. is a cool new stage where I've been saying yes to only things I really want to say yes to, wow. which I wish I had done sooner with some things. Wow. Just because you know. Wow, wow, wow. So now you say yes to some things, but you don't say yes to everything. Wow. <laughs> Great contribution once again, Ed. Yep. There's opportunities you've taken, I'm sure, where you go, this is just not going to be it, but I'm just going to do it because I feel like, what if me, what if yeah. maybe one person, yeah. because we hear that in personal yes. development, like, what if the one person, yes. I did way too much stuff where it was Same. that and was just, you know, <laughs> running myself ragged. But it's really, I'm not, I'm really, I wouldn't do anything differently, no, because all of this is playing out exactly how it's supposed to. It's not my plan. And if you mm. really believe in a higher power, you believe in God like we do, mm. no, this is how it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be the example. I'm supposed to be the big voice. Mm. I'm supposed to already have the following and the platform that I do so that I save so many more lives, yes. so that I show so many more people a different way. Mm. It's really important. It is the way it, it is. Uh, but I wish in those oh. moments, because I've won every award there is mm-hmm. for, for what I've done. Anything mm. I touch, it's like, mm-hmm. oh, like invest in Jesse Lee because mm-hmm. it's going to turn gold. Mm-hmm. You know, she does it. Oh my gosh, she jo- she did that. Wow. Like, I'm always the top performer. Yeah, I told her when I met her, I said, if you were a stock, I would buy you <laughs> because <laughs> she's going up. And and uh-huh. also, by the way, you said something. Also, you look incredible. You remind me of my daughter or my young sister. <laughs> Anyways, how does it feel to be dying? This guy sucks. I'm sorry. He sucks. I want to finish on though. So neither one of us are medical doctors, although yeah. you're a lot more like one than I am now because of all the <laughs> medical care you've gone through. But you did say something that I want everyone to evaluate. You said you created this, meaning, yeah. and I think I know what you mean, all the stress, all the trauma, all the reliving the trauma, all the holding on to it, all the intensity pointed in the right direction makes a lot of awards and a lot of money. Intensity mm-hmm. in the other direction can do harm. And I was actually asking, you came up last week. My mom asked me how you were doing because I've told my mom about you. And um, we were talking about my dad's cancer. My dad still, my dad wasn't 34, my gosh, but my dad died young, relatively speaking. And I said, Mom, do you think dad's trauma that he held on to from his upbringing and his stress? No, because I feel like, I mean, I could, of course, stress, like actual stress is a factor. But like, think about all the World War II veterans that, you know, survived until their 90s, 100 years old. Like, they saw a horrible tragedy and probably had PTSD in some capacity and they live. It's just random. I think, I mean, I don't know. I'm not God, but I think it's random. I think there's environmental factors, genetic factors, there's diet, there's, you know, breathing. I don't know. There's a million trillion things that could go wrong and happen. And you just don't know. It's impossible to know why things happen. And I don't think we're supposed to know, I guess, as, you know, little human beings. But I do not agree with the sentiment that, like, if you... Because that all that promotes is positive thinking, positive thinking, positive thinking, and then you won't get cancer. It's like, oh my God, like, you know, you want to drive yourself insane? Believe that. And then you'll be nuts very quickly. <laughs> so my dad was this tremendous worrier. I inherited that from my dad. Most things with our kids are caught, not taught. I always say, I caught that from my dad. Worrying and anxiety and something to be around my dad. He's just like, (sighs) like a sigh for no reason, you know? And I said, mom, do you think that maybe that brought some of this on or turned those genes on sooner? The stress and the anxiety and the worry. And my mom said, absolutely 100% yes. And I'm wondering, is that what you meant by that you brought some? Okay, is your mom a doctor or <laughs> she's just your mom? Because <laughs> I don't really care what Ed Millette's mom's opinion is. No offense. I'm yeah, on and I don't, and I, I know I don't, I don't want to trigger any cancer patients or anything sure. or survivors or anything who go what? Like I didn't create this because mm-hmm. the cancer world's interesting. There's some, yeah. There's ch- like children. That's always the thing. Like when I read the secret, that was my one holdup. Even when I was, you know, into the secret and all this bullshit that I was into, that was the one thing that I could not get past. It's like every thought comes, you know, from your brain, and everything that happens in your life comes from your thoughts. It's like when I'm a baby. <laughs> or a baby gets, you know, cancer, what thought, they don't even have brain cells to think things, and yet they're experiencing this. So tell me what that means. If it's all our perception, is if it's all in our head, why do kids who don't have thoughts have things go wrong in their life? 
And I, there's no solution. They will not answer other than saying it must be from a past life. Oh, and the past life is when they did something bad. And then I go, shut the F up. <laughs> I don't want to hear you talk anymore. People who think cancer is the worst thing that ever happened to them. And there's some people who think cancer is the best thing that happened to them. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I am in the second camp. And that freaks people out when I say that. It's mm. it, She said, what? Mm. She said, cancer is the best thing ever. Nothing was going to slow me down, Ed. Mm. Nothing. Mm. You, nothing. Me. You I, you, okay. said, you just said I did a coaching call from a hospital bed. Yep. Nothing was going to make me go, let's chill out a little bit. I don't, yep. you know, I just, I, it had to happen. I, I needed to smell the roses a little. Uh, but yeah, what I mean when I say I created this is, I was always running ragged. I was, you know, sleep was not the priority. The goals were the priority. The changing other people's lives was the priority. The helping others. But it's still your priority. You just want to, because you're doing that now. <laughs> you're just doing it a little bit less because you are going through something. But what are you trying to get healed for? To help people, to change millions of lives. So the the, the goal is still wrong, right? Am I missing it? Am I misunderstanding and always extending an extra hand and not taking care of myself. Your own pleasure and enjoyment wasn't the priority. No, either. never. Right. I, and I, I think even in this season of cancer and everything, I am enjoying way more. And I don't mean because I'm saying no to things. It's part of it is that presence thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm still competitive. I really still don't know anybody who can outsell me right now, even like good luck. Like She's I'm still, still a monster. speaking all over the place, yeah. crushing it. Yeah. It's yeah. yes to stuff I want. So aren't you still doing the thing to make you sick or not. I don't, I, I'm missing it again. Like they just talk in circles and like none of it actually makes sense. No to things I don't want. Mm -hmm. And so it goes back to all these high pressure things that I would put myself in and just, you know, yeah, the toxic situations. And again, the no forgiveness. My, my mom was not the only person I didn't forgive. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of people that, that I did not forgive that I've had that I, you know, you know, like some miserable people in life that you've ever been around that are like a hundred years old are like the most bitter people and they're like a hundred and healthy. <laughs> it's like, again, does it mean like, oh, well, you know, once you, if you reach a hundred years old, you must be like the best person ever. Or if you die young, you must've been a, a bitter bitch. Like, <laughs> it's not true. You know what? Gosh, this is, I'm, it's almost like, I feel like I'm in an A, a you know, it's yeah, like one of the steps of AA, like yeah. you forgive people. Yeah. Uh, I'm really having to work on me as a person. And so mm. the changes in Jesse Lee as an actual human being have been profound since February. Mm. It's not, they're not little changes. Mm. They're, I've always been a kind person. Mm -hmm. I'm even more patient and kind now, which mm. is a different kind of kindness, mm. right? Uh, it's just it'll completely it, it just changes everything okay so you by the way i just want to i remember her distinctly saying oh you ate a candy bar and you have diabetes Ugh! why would you do that i lied to everybody about going to columbia because i wanted to see who my losers were on my team it's like that's very kind of you say something i'm not a doctor either but i think there's a power to saying i created this and so i can fix it I think there's yes. a power to that. And even if you're not in that camp and you've, and you've had a disease, I think we would all agree that worrying and anxiety and, and anger or frustration isn't healthy. Yeah. So it certainly isn't helping things when we're that way. Okay. Well, so, I actually, I don't want to cut you off, but no, I, I, just, I asked my doctor in Germany two weeks ago because he was looking over my blood work and Germans are very direct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he goes, oh, disaster. I'm really? like, great. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> great. Right. And he didn't mean it in a bad way. Yeah. He just said, yeah, they, 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 don't worry. We can fix all of this, but mm. ugh, this is a disaster. I said, okay. <laughs> and I said, well, I have a question then. Mm. When you see other patients that their blood work is this bad, do they look like me? Yeah. Do they move like me? Do they? Because yeah. I'm not in pain. Right. I'm not in any of these things. He mm. goes, absolutely not. Yeah. He said, but you have the strongest mindset I've ever met. Mm. And a lot of this health stuff is mindset over all of it. And is he then saying, okay, sign the form to pay me $1 million for this treatment. You have it. I know you can do it, but sign this form to pay me first so I can uh, d distribute it to you. Yeah, that's probably called sales, baby. And that's what you're good at. So you should be better to see it, that he's got something to sell you. 
like, oh, he's going to tell you whatever you want to hear. Oh, you're, you, you are the smartest woman I've ever seen. You would love to buy this car with the three layer paint job. Oh, I've never seen such a smart consumer. You will definitely buy this car. Like, it seems sort of obvious. Like, I don't think that that's, it benefits him to get you to think like, oh yes, you are so, you have a great chance at survival by paying me money to cure you. Yes, I have to treat all of it, but you have a belief system mm. that you're going to win this. Mm. And a lot of people don't. And it, and I, you know, I know, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza mm -hmm. way more than I do, mm -hmm. right? But even things like don't become your diagnosis. Mm -hmm. You hear, mm -hmm. oh, well, with cancer, I'm supposed to be really tired and I'm supposed to be really, you know, mm -hmm. wh whatever, all mm -hmm. these things. I'm supposed to look a certain way, walk mm -hmm. a certain way. I got to stop doing all these things. I just didn't look up. I just didn't get on Google. Yeah. You know, I just yeah. didn't become a diagnosis. I mm -hmm. said, oh, wait. I remember walking out of my, my, colon my colonoscopy and I said, hey, you know, doc, by the way, wh what stage do you think this is? He goes, I mean, it's at least three because I can see it's, it's, it's in your lymph nodes too. Like everything's swollen down there. I said, oh, okay. Okay. Stage three. Okay. No, okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of walked out like, mm -hmm. I don't even really know what that means, mm. but I'm not going to let this ruin my good mood. I'm going to move forward. We're not. I'm not going to jump to conclusions. I'm not going to get on WebMD and find out what 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 it you know. Mm. And it's not to say like sometimes I'll be like, well, what's what coming my, my way? What's going on? Right. Whatever. And I told you earlier. I asked you, my doctor, hey, why are my lymph nodes a little swollen in my neck and my stomach feels like maybe? And he said, oh, I'm so excited. Your immune system's kicking on. Mm. This is your immune system working again. I'm like, mm. oh, that's what this is. Okay, because <laughs> Google said for sure <laughs> I'm a goner. <laughs> you know. Um, I love this new so. guy, by the way. That that you're that you're working with and by the way everyone i want to just interject and then we're going to talk about diagnosis we're going to talk some business i just want to know you know if she passes away in the next few months which that's what the doctors have told her is that's what she's reporting that you know by christmas she may pass away what is the message then like well it was better for her to have a positive attitude towards the end than to have a negative attitude and i can get behind that i honestly can as someone who's made you know choose sadness branding you can choose happiness too or or fake happiness if you if you want but is that what they're talking about like well you might as well be positive even if you die or do they truly believe like no this is the cure here is just pretending none of this is happening i'm interested too but i want to say one thing to you um you know the Ad, the attitude that you've brought to this, I really believe, is the differentiator. And, and she is, by the way, we've decided kind of through coaching that she is documenting her journey here. So if you don't follow her on social media, we're gonna there's gonna be an actual documentary, the whole entire thing, the journey of what mm. she's going through. And I'm just so proud of the way that you've brought your mindset to this because, you know, so many people that are listening to this right now have a challenge that they're worried about. And if anything happens to everybody, this should be one big perspective builder for you. Because whatever you're going through right now, more than likely, it's not quite as significant as what Jesse Lee's going through right now. Maybe it just gives you perspective that, hey, this disagreement I'm in with my spouse or this bill or I lost my job. or Hey, this is a woman who was told you're not going to make it to Christmas. And I want to go to that part of it now, too. Talk a little bit about the different... Tell, tell me how you feel about that once again for the fifth time because you know we need a little emotion to 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 really kick this podcast into third gear here it's like okay uh, bedside manners of the doctors you don't need to name them but i'm aware sure. of them and then what you've chosen to do for cool. treatment part of what you've chosen to do for your treatment obviously you can afford mm -hmm. but i'd be curious as to your advice and we're not by the way making a, what she's going to do is tell you the recommendation she's made for herself which by the way about 50 percent of the people that you know are like you're crazy to be doing it this way right god his palms are so white compared to his tan body <laughs> looks like he put his hand in like cement or something plaster of paris he was like making a hand uh model earlier <laughs> isn't that weird it's very white okay sorry right and 50 percent of the doctors are like oh my gosh you should have been in chemo immediately mm -hmm. so by no means are either one of us making a recommendation of what you should do Correct. but this is jesse lee's story her journey her decisions her experience that i want to share with you so to the diagnosis point of the one guy that we both, you know, the Texas mm -hmm. guy mm -hmm. to a few other things. Just take them through that a little bit. So just to get just a reminder, I see a question. This podcast is from July 25th. So one month ago, it was posted. I don't know exactly when it was recorded. 
get people perspective. I've been to eight oncologists. So this is not one oncologist, two oncologists. This is not whatever. Um, some are integrative oncologists. The rest are your traditional practitioners. So mm-hmm. two integrative and then six are your, you know, normal, okay, you go to Texas oncology and whatever, right. okay? Uh, and so immediately, so there's, here, here's the deal. I don't judge any doctors at all, period, end of discussion, because ultimately when you think about it, to become a doctor that is a well-known oncologist, and I was only going to well-known oncologists just because of resources and, mm. and who I am, thank mm. God. If you think about it, this person has gone to medical school for 12 years. Wow. Everything they know is traditional standard of care. Mm. This is what they're taught, period. You're not supposed to think outside the box. It's mm. not the goal. The goal is standard of care. Chemotherapy and immunotherapy <laughs> is really big business. Mm. You can, and this is not, this is not opinion. You know, it's a bigger business, the fucking wellness industry. That's a bigger business than the chemotherapy business, I'm sure. Like, as a, uh, like, I can't just go into a, I personally, myself, don't have cancer, hopefully. uh, And I can't just go in and, like, get myself injected with chemo. But you know what I can do? I can go do all of this healing work, energy work, ayahuasca stuff therapy, whatever, you know, tomorrow, because like, oh, your emotional healing and da, 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 you know? So honestly, the alternative side is way more predatory in my opinion. At least they don't offer chemotherapy to anyone off the street just to cure your trauma. <laughs> you can just Google this if you want to, or you can look into whatever. And it's like, she's, okay, sorry, I'm not going off on a tangent. She is like a worshiper of money. I love money. I'm a, I'm a rich woman. I, this is my accomplishment. This is my, my whole life story is I made a lot of money and I'm proud of it and I can teach you how to make money. Okay, but we're going to demonize it because the chemotherapy industry makes a lot of money. Let's give me a break. Come on. Be real. So I don't have, and, and then to become a well-known oncologist, that means you're practicing for decades. Mm-hmm. These are not young spring chickens, mm-hmm. you know, in their 20s or something mm-hmm. that I'm going to see. These mm-hmm. are older gentlemen mm-hmm. who have been practicing for decades. Mm-hmm. Just in your so, case, it happened to be gentlemen. Everybody correct. And I'm sure there's women too. In right, my case, right, it was just gentlemen. Right. And so for 30, 40 years, this is what you know. Mm-hmm. You know full foxin of Austin. Mm-hmm. You know chemotherapy. This is You know that the average lifespan for a diagnosis like mine is two and a half years. Mm-hmm. That's it. And that's if you do the most intense. And, mm-hmm. and you ask, is this for so scary. a cure or are you trying to keep me alive? Oh, I'm sorry. There's no cure. Mm-hmm. Every single last one of them. So mm-hmm. I went to so many oncologists because, yeah. But again, like if that's the truth, they, I find it to be admirable that they want to tell you the truth as opposed to a lying charlatan who will tell you that, oh, if you buy my product, I'll teach you how to heal yourself (laughs) because that may make you feel better, but you will not have a chance to set your affairs in order correctly if you listen to that and it's not true. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I was a little bit of a hope seeker where I just wanted somebody to say, maybe not. Maybe you're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. And instead of that, it was co- the constant, you know, do this, do that. It's, mm-hmm. it's the chemo, it's the chemo. And so after the so surgery is step one, mm-hmm. and then chemo mm-hmm. is step two. And so I would just ask each of them, I'd say, so if I do nothing, mm-hmm. according to them, not nothing, but if mm-hmm. I do nothing, no standard of care. What's the prognosis? And some doctors do not play God, which I really appreciate. Mm-hmm. There was one doctor in particular who it was the most... Dep- Why would you ask if you're asking? But then you're like, I'm glad that they don't play God and give me the answer that I'm asking. Why do you ask? Devastating moment of the entire journey. Mm-hmm. D- wouldn't even look me in my eyes, by the way. Face is down like this. And he goes, you'll be dead in six months, October, October. You're definitely not seeing Christmas. Mm-hmm. No. And then he said... But if you do the most intense versions of chemo, we're just going to blast you. We can probably get you two and a half years. Then you'll be dead. This is quote unquote. Thank God I brought my best friend there. I'm FaceTiming my, my boyfriend at the time. Yeah, I talked to you right after. And, um, and yes, I talked yeah. to you immediately after. Yeah. Uh, and I said, and I, and I black out actually, because yeah. I think your brain has a way of protecting you from trauma. My brain mm. just knew, no. Yeah. And I black out. Thank God best friend starts talking. Mm. And I just remember going, I'm not normal. It's the only thing I remember mm. saying. And I said, and then I, I managed to say, so you're telling me 
that I can have two and a half years with no quality of life or I can try to heal Mm -hmm. is really what my brain started hearing in that moment. And Mm -hmm. thank God I heard it like that Mm -hmm. because then it was an immediate decision Mm -hmm. to change. I was already starting to add stuff, but Mm -hmm. it was an immediate overhaul. It was a nutrition overhaul. It Mm -hmm. was a, it, I mean, I can start listing things that I do Mm -hmm. on a, on a daily, weekly basis. And some, I I will actually. I want to do that, but let me say one thing about it. I want to just interject. I want to be clear with what we're saying here too, just for responsibility. She's stage four. An incredibly aggressive type of cancer. So in her own situation, yes. the chemo factor versus extending life by maybe 18 months, but yep. no quality of life versus six months. So by no means is either one of us saying no chemotherapy if you get cancer. I'm not saying that, no. there's, there's, there's people listening to this right now that go, I did chemotherapy or radiation and I'm cancer free and I'm in Thank remission. God. So we're not saying that. We're mm-hmm. talking about her situation right here. But Yeah, I mean, I think what this comes down to is, you know, Try, might as well try the alternative I guess is like her mentality because it's like well you know the other possibility doesn't sound good either and that's your personal decision once again it, it just it's an impossible decision it's horrible both suck you know but I just don't and maybe she's you know like deluding herself to believe that yeah she can actually heal because that's what you have to do to keep going and kind of get through this but I don't believe that she will come out of this. Like, I just, I don't believe in that. I mean, there has been, I guess, technically in some cases, like, you know, what is it? The, um, the spontaneous uh, cancer just goes away and it's like the an anomaly it happens like once in a bazillion cases. So who knows? You never know. A miracle could happen, but it's like, you know, statistically... Yeah, I think I think she's just deciding to to go. Uh, they say like you know die with, you know your, the way that you live. Like people, some people when they get diagnosed with cancer, like you know you have two years left if you do this aggressive treatment and you have to quit smoking. And they go, no, I'm not gonna quit smoking. I, two years, I'd rather smoke six more months of my life. And hey, that's your choice, man. Or you want to drink? Your liver is going. You want to drink like. Who's to say what you can do, I guess, but then don't go on a podcast and go, this is, you know, what I did and I'm a really successful person. (laughs) And then Ed saying, oh yeah, this is for everyone to listen to. And this is great advice for everybody. Now he has done this disclaimers about, you know, this is her story. This is, we're not saying don't do chemo. And I do appreciate that. I think that's important to note that that's good and important to, to say, um, but all these caveats of like, so she's so successful and like in the past, like follow her lead and she'll teach you how to be a great person. It's like, okay, well, so are we supposed to follow her lead here? But you know, okay, we'll just hear her story. No doubt. Even if you were to do that, some of the things you're doing nutritionally unquestionably are smart mm-hmm. things to be doing. So yeah. what are they? I, and I do appreciate you saying that cause mm-hmm. it's really true. Mm-hmm. Uh, I am not trying to bash standard of care and I'm not trying yeah. to make anybody feel like traditional oncology mm-hmm. is not the, the way I'm not trying to make doctors good. feel like I'm anti-doctor. I'm certainly mm-hmm. not. I'm under the, and care in that doctor's doctors. case, my gosh, to be able um, to look another human the, being in the eye and go, yeah. um, you're going to be dead. In, now to yeah. say you're gonna be dead in six months is probably crass the yeah. way that he said it, sure. but that's a difficult news for these people to have to deliver to people right. as well. And he does it all day, probably right. you know, 12 you people a day or right. something. So, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, he's caring. So I'm, sure. I'm super empathetic towards his job and, yes. and everything. And yeah. all of the oncologists have said similar yeah. things. You mm-hmm. know, you got to start chemo now, 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 now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I would like people to also know it's not as rushed as they make it seem for most people. Mm-hmm. Okay, so it gets really scary if we're being mm-hmm. honest. It seems like, you know, this is a really fast growing cancer. And I would say, how do you know? Well, we don't know, but I, well, hold on. Mm-hmm. I just want more information, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but please, just I think they're they're erring on the side of well, it's very aggressive, so it probably is fast moving. So the best treatment forward is to take care of it immediately. That's the best chance because if it doesn't grow, great, great. But if it does, then we're wasting precious time. I think would be the mentality there. Just do what's right for you. And one of the biggest things is, you know, just follow, like, please follow your intuition, follow mm-hmm. your guidance, use the word discernment earlier. And mm-hmm. I wanted to say, that's really the right word. Mm-hmm. You will, if you pray for discernment, you will get it. Mm-hmm. You have to learn to listen to yourself during all of this. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what I've gotten out during of During everything you do. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So what are you doing? What are you doing different with your nutrition? So, and what are you doing for your treatment? Let's just, we, yeah. we, we are not telling. Oh God, she did say that. That's crazy. Where did she say that? I want to hear that side was it on tiktok or something because that is screwed up i'm glad well maybe this is again from july she either 
had this opinion and then changed it or the reverse? She changed her opinion now to have this opinion. Well, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt, but I would like to hear that content if you can find it. Telling your true story if we don't tell them actually what you're doing. They're yeah. going to follow you on this journey. Yeah. So tell them what's up. Yeah, it's pretty intense. So, okay. uh, so I went from pretty much carnivore to immediately vegan. So mm -hmm. all the juicing, I mm -hmm. bought the best juicer ever. I mm -hmm. did all the research on that. Um, I'm not even, and when I say juicing, I'm not saying like, I make a delicious green juice in the morning. I'm talking <laughs> eight to 12 juices a day. So I'm almost on the hour. Whoa. I'm just overdosing my body in, okay. in nutrition, okay. uh, which is making my hair grow really long and shiny. So it's, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like there's benefits to this. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but it's quite the shift, right? Mm. I feel like I'm starting a greenhouse in my refrigerator. <laughs> um, but that's been unbelievable. I'm no longer doing vegan because mm -hmm. my doctor that I'm under care now with uh, really loves keto. Okay. Uh, and that is also because well, the that's cancer... Well, completely different. Completely different. Yeah. Uh, the, the cancer that decided to reside in my body mm -hmm. in, and grow it, through blood tests. Is she like, I did a ton of research that told me to be vegan, which I trust. And then I talked to the doctor who wants me on keto. So then I switched. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> So what was your research bad or what? It's the only reason we know this, and I don't know what the blood test is off the top of my head, but the cancer that is living in me, or was, I don't know, maybe it's gone, mm -hmm. uh, is feeding off of sugars. Okay. And it was proven through a blood test. He said some cancers are growing that. on proteins, some cancers yeah. are growing on carbohydrates and sugars, some cancers are growing, you know, whatever. I said, oh, okay. And he said, don't even touch it. Don't touch carbohydrates. You have to be keto. He started talking about the oils in my body, my mitochondria health, and all this stuff. So immediate nutrition shift. Still juicing, but now it's all these green juices. So they're not as yummy as like the carrot and apple and not, the delicious yeah. whatever. Uh, but I don't care at this, you know, whatever. That's the easiest thing. The juice I've got pretty much down to a science. But um, every day hyperbaric chamber. I actually have one in my house. Thank God. Uh, I also have a biocharger in my house, which you guys can check out. It's a crazy energy. Uh-huh, that's a bullshit machine. <clears throat> bullshit expensive machine that uh, our friend Heidi Powell now is also using. And on Maintenance Phase, um, a podcast that they talk about these types of things. Sometimes it's more about like diet culture, but um, they talked about the biocharger for quite a while in one of the episodes, I think about paleo, and it's like totally garbage. So, but if you believe it, I mean, I guess placebo is a concept that does work, hypothetically, could help you feel symptomatically better so in that way if you believe the biocharger works then maybe you could maybe feel a tiny bit better but for the price uh it's not worth it just take a sugar pill and pretend that it's doing something for you it'll be cheaper energy shifting machine which is super cool i use grounding mats as well constantly because i do live in a penthouse so i'm not on the ground with my feet in the ground and you're mm -hmm. you're on the beach you can get in the beach yeah, and get yourself grounded, grounding and, and, all the time. And grounded which is so <laughs> important for your health in general um i'm earthing and grounding all the time but i'm not gonna offer you to come to my house because i'm busy i do ozone at least four times a week mm -hmm. uh, which they actually take your blood out and they're spinning it yep. and they're 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 cleaning it and then putting it back in uh i also do a that's what ozone is i don't think so ozone is like something else i thought that's like plasma i don't know well what do i know yeah i, I don't think that is a all these are alternative treatments. That's what it is. It's like, okay, if nothing else is working, you're not, you know, it's not proven method, but why not? Yeah, eat an orange. That might help, you know. Hocket ozone, which is basically this chamber where your entire body's inside. You're getting ozone. You're getting infrared. You're also getting um, uh, hype hypothermia so you're getting overheated as well uh, all in this chamber where just your head is out and it pulls it's so cool and gross you see all these toxins come out of you every single time you told me that. Um, yeah. it's really cool yeah. uh, I doubt that okay um, I do uh, this is one's really important very high dose vitamin C three times a week and that's what's been killing off a lot of a lot of the stuff I also okay. have a lot of other infusions as well that I've been doing in Germany uh, I do red light therapy, the, the bed. Mm -hmm. um, I get in a in a bed at least five times a week, if not every day. Uh, gosh, okay, what else? I know I'm missing things. There's more. <laughs> and wait, there's mm -hmm. more now. Uh, cold, I do cold plunges now, yeah. which I actually so really enjoy. So what are these things? So by the way. He's like, shut up. Okay, I've heard enough. Now it's time to talk about me. <laughs> She's like, I do cold plunges. That's something I do. Okay, anyways, wrap it up, girl. I'm done hearing your treatment plan. <laughs> And cold plunge ain't going to do nothing for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to tell everybody. It might feel good, but it ain't going to cure your diseases. Okay. By the way, this is her journey, 
her way of care for her with a six-month diagnosis, everybody. What of these things will you do when the cancer is gone? In other words, is some of it just for the cancer or when, once the cancer is gone or had you never had cancer based yeah. on what you've learned? Some of those protocols, I assume you still would be, I bet yeah. you'd still be doing red light. You still oh, be doing yeah. cold plunge. Yep. Would you be doing uh, hyperbaric? Mm-hmm. What, would you still be doing most There's of those There's some things? things I would do for sure. Uh, one I didn't mention, and it's my favorite, and it's going to yeah. be so weird. So... Uh, I started doing coffee enemas about three months ago, mm-hmm. and I was told years ago to do these, and I mm-hmm. thought that is the weirdest thing ever. Mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Mm-hmm. No way. And I even bought the <laughs> and it was sitting, and I think yeah. I threw it away six months ago or yeah. something. The yeah. irony. The first time I did one, I slept like, uh, I mean, a, do teen- I need a to teenager. Do, it? do I yes. need to do it? Really? Yeah, and okay. you might have parasites, so it might be weird. Why would you say so I have stuff. them? You, Why? I used- because that's what everyone says on the internet these days, that everyone has parasites. <laughs> Because that's the trending topic right now. It's parasites and cold plunges, okay? P and P, the parasites and plunges, petroleum jelly. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so that's the hot the hot item right now is that. So that's why they're talking about it right now. And then in six months, it'll be you know something else. You seem kind of buggy. No, I'm kidding. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Thank you. But she a lot looked of- right at me like you you probably have parasites. <laughs> Thank you. They say that to everybody. That's what I, you do that now? You look at me like parasite. I look like I have parasites. You don't awesome. actually look like you have parasites. But I get like the most, it's instant mental clarity. Okay. Almost like, oh, you're like wow, this is crazy. I- instantly. Okay. Uh, and, I, and, and, uh, and digestion takes the most energy out of everything that you do mm. when you're cleaning the entire lower third out of your colon. So, mm. and then after that I go do. I'm sort of surprised with the surgery that she had with removing like 15 inches or 10 to 15 inches of her colon that she would be able to have a coffee enema without some sort of reaction, but... Okay. I actually have at my house a, an ozone, Simply O2 makes an ozone machine for your home. So I have an oxygen tank and everything. I do rectal ozone after it as well every Jeez. time. So there's a lot. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot going on. But I would never change that. I would, I would never stop red light. It's yeah. amazing. The benefits mm-hmm. are just incredible. Um, I, I, and I really believe in this, this ozone stuff in your blood. Mm-hmm. This stuff is crazy. I really think that. Hearing I mean, I, more and more and more about yeah. it. I'm not r- willing or ready to stake my uh-huh. claim on it because I'm really sort of watching through you and some other people that I know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm seeing how you turn out before I put anything up my booty hole, which I <laughs> think is good, I guess. You can be the guinea pig and I will observe and ask you questions about it. So someone's listening to this. They've cried their eyes out. They are now looking at their own life differently. They've got a perspective. They've, they've. Okay. Why would I do that? Like, uh, pe- not to say that she's, this isn't a tragic story, which I think it is, but people die every day. Like I've seen tragedy on TV, people dead, you know, horrible cases. Like that doesn't put your life in perspective. Only this now, for some reason, this has put my life in perspective. She's unrelatable to me, really, because she's got such a successful, perfectionist, go, go, go attitude that I don't necessarily have. So unless you have that specific, you know, personality trait, I don't know how this would be different than anyone else. Once again. Uh, Thank you. Good spider, bad spider. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much. Uh, and they say, welcome back, Kia, just joining in late to this train wreck. Yeah. Welcome. We're almost done-ish. We have about 20 minutes-ish. Yeah, 20 minutes left. Um, we've asked, I mean, I've got a lot of intel. It seems like people who know more about what's going on know that like things have even changed from this point, which was a month ago. Like Treatments are different and different doctors. And I'm not surprised given that she's given this information out as like, this is my plan, but it's seeming to be fluid. So it's interesting. Um, so some of this may not even be you know, what she's even doing anymore. But uh, yeah, we're still learning about it. And it is interesting. It's, it sucks. It's sad all around, honestly. Sad situation, just generally. And I will say, um, I want to say this. Ah! Ah! That's what Matthew McConaughey has to add to this conversation. And medical medium, what do you have to say? There's, there's something I call bullshitting yourself. Hmm. Good insight. Thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you, good spider, bad spider. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you. 
said, man, maybe I need to have forgiveness for this person. Maybe I need to get going and hurry up and win. Maybe I need to start live like I'm dying, to quote the Tim McGraw thing that we've talked about. What- hurry up and win? <laughs> Isn't that against the advice once again? Like, don't uh, overdo it here? Okay. What would you say to somebody? Say, hey, listen, if someone came up to you right now at Starbucks and said, hey, I heard you on the Ed Milet show, and I he didn't ask you this, or... She, she's at the Starbucks inserting the enema in public. <laughs> I'm doing a frappuccino enema. It's a new thing. It's really delicious. It's helping me. I'm just curious. What would someone's like, excuse me, can you please go uh, to the bathroom to do that? What would you say to him? What would you say to somebody who says, what is the biggest thing you would impart upon to another person about what you've taken from this that we haven't shared yet? In other words... This is my thing I've got from this that I need people to know. What would you say? I don't care who you are. I need you to know that you need to do what's best for you. And I mean that in a lot of different ways. Mm. I was a people pleaser for sure. Like I wanted everybody to like me, I think, because I wasn't liked very much when I was younger. Mm. So if you were nice to me and then mean to me, it was okay. I'd still be nice to you. Um, and I think me too. Ed says breathlessly, "Oh, thank you." Uh, got my my coffee enema ready to go. I'm just kidding. I won't eat it. I'm just gonna keep it here for safekeeping. Okay, back to it. I think too many of us are living for other people <laughs> instead of living for ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I just wish more people would chase that dream that they really care about, would take those risks that matter a lot to them, Mm -hmm. would love the person that they know they're supposed to be in love with, or take the, the, the big scary chance that everybody has told them just doesn't make any sense at all, and just live their life. Because I look at people all the time, and I coach people all the time, and I just go, my God, you're not happy. Yeah. Like, who are, who are you living for? Mm -hmm. Because when you realize that every day is not guaranteed, you're well, they're kind of living for you, right? If they're trying to get your approval or be on your downline or whatever, you know, they're probably trying to live for you. So maybe you should release them from the constraints of the MLM model, which is stressful and horrendous. Thank you. You're not worried so much anymore about offending people because of your opinions or your truth. You start realizing that your authentic self is all that you really need to be. Mm. There's so much good going on in the world. Maybe and I'll have a little bit. We, we as humans, I think, spend so much time, effort, and energy on things that just don't matter to us at all, trying to please people we don't even like. Yeah. And for what? At what cost? So that's where I wanted for to ask you next to stay right on there. So we've talked about what does matter, and you just covered one thing that doesn't matter. What else doesn't matter? In other words... Pleasing MLMs. Other people and other people's opinions, all of that. Man, what an absolute beautiful truth. Coaching. <laughs> this stupid ass podcast. I don't know. Every time Ed Millette makes a video. What other things? You're faced with this, right? You have this moment in your life, and everyone at some point will be faced with something like this. It may be at 104 years old, and you're an old woman laying in your bed someday. Or you're 34 years old in the prime of your life and being healthy. But at some point, you're going to be faced with this is going, my body will eventually possibly end. What doesn't matter? What else doesn't matter? Because Matthew McConaughey said on the show, sometimes you got to just make a list of the things you don't want in your life Mm -hmm. to get clear on what you do want. So we know these opinions of other people. By the way, you're just actually, it's something we've always said, but you're living it now. You're like, trust me, it totally doesn't matter. Yep. What else doesn't matter? I know that's a hard question, <laughs> yeah. but what else doesn't matter? I'm curious. Uh, a most Okay, honestly, yeah. most stuff does not matter. Mm. Most stuff just does not matter, and I <laughs> wish more people would look at their life and realize that. Mm. The little stuff that drives you crazy, mm. I've said it, it everything just gets, it's, it's clearer when you have something like this happen. Yeah. So I used to say, if, it, if, it, if it's not going to matter in five years, don't give it five minutes. Mm. P- would you please live that? Yeah. People are so freaked out about the dumbest little things. And I just know you're not going to care that there was traffic in L.A. Because there's always traffic in L.A. Right. You know, like 
it, 20 minutes from now. Mm. So why are you having this huge blow-up fight? The, the arguments you're having with your partner, why? The little things about your kids, why? The, the stuff that drives you nuts. and cra- like, None of this stuff really matters. Mm. The little tiny sacrifices. I, I think back on, you know, I, I, when I was starting my bu- my business, I lived in um, first in a basement and then in a above a garage, you know, in a roof that's like this and so you couldn't sit up in bed because yeah. you had to roll out of bed. It was like yeah. one of those situations. Yeah. And I'm like... I remember thinking, God, why am I living here? I need to have something more, like, uh, you know, and it pushed me. But I also think back, I go, why did I actually care? Yeah. Why did that matter to me? Mm. Why did the, fa- you know what doesn't matter? Fancy clothes don't matter. Fancy things don't matter unless it brings you joy. Mm. The only things in life that actually matter are the stuff that makes you smile. Wow. Period. That's it. Mm. So, okay, so, y- <laughs> I don't know. It's so against the whole thing of like my legacy, what I'm doing, I'm helping a billion people. Does that make you smile? No, it makes you feel good about yourself. It makes you feel like you've accomplished something. It makes you feel secure. It makes you feel special. I mean, and she's still trying. What does this podcast mean? Nothing. So why are we doing it? I don't know, because I want to. Do you? Or you want to please him because he's your coach and you admire him for his work ethic or whatever. Or his lifestyle. It's all bullshit. It's like people think they're aware and they're not. Or they're self-aware, but they're not actually living the life they claim that they are now aware of, in my opinion. Do you love it? Are you happy? Mm-hmm. Are the people you're spending time around the ones that you want to? Mm-hmm. Are the activities you're doing in it? Is it the hobby you like? Or do you just do it because? No more just doing stuff because. Because mm-hmm. that crap doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. You start looking at life like this moment's wow, precious, wow, this wow. moment's precious, this one's precious. Mm-hmm. And you chase those instead of things. Is that, isn't this obvious though? Like the reason people don't do that is because of a lot of different reasons that like money, obligation, responsibility, having to work, having to commute, there's frustrations day to day to day. Yes, we all know this. Everyone knows this. This is a universal thing that everyone knows. You shouldn't do these things, but yet we all do them. It's a human condition. Like this is not, oh, I never heard this before. <laughs> what i'm supposed to enjoy myself what like come on ed the the fakeness is just so annoying like Whoa! <laughs> instead of other people's opinions instead of any of that stuff so good and by the way for people like you and i winning is fun yes right winning achieving competing being number one um seeing what you're capable of she's not she's trust me when i tell you she's not talking about just sit around and enjoy the moment she's saying do things you enjoy if you're a winner if you're a competitor go freaking win and compete because you all know we love that stuff right i'm i like winning more than i like sitting on the beach i just (laughs) flat out you do do and so do you (laughs) i know i do i've seen you in pickleball too he's competitive in everything (laughs) well and and by the way, so is she. But know. you know what I'm talking about. She's yes, got this diagnosis. She's still speaking my head. She goes, I just freaking slayed it. Best yeah. talk I've ever given. And she lights up when she talks. It's so ironic that he has a big beach house, like, on the ocean, I think in Malibu. He doesn't like the ocean. But he grounds all day. He's earthing all day. But he hates the beach. He'd rather be winning. You guys don't even know who you are. I'm telling you. They have no idea what they're even saying. And people just eat it up and they're fine with it. It's like, Okay about that so th- but this is so profound what you've said I mean like I just I just think that sometimes I think when you get threatened with your life maybe not being here you accumulate the wisdom you would have gotten at the end of your life anyway mm-hmm. and I think that's, that's one powerful. of the I think it's one of the blessings that I've seen in you now she's also by the way kicked major tail in a bunch of different businesses right and there's this side to her that I love that's this Boss Lee side. And I want her to show up here a little bit too because there's these sides. There's this this reflective, kind, gentle, forgiving, wise, perspective-having, patient woman that I really love. But there's this other thing, this other being who's like, I'm going to stomp you. We're going to win. Get off your butt. Let's go. And you've pushed people in their lives like you've pushed you. What do you think? Now, don't be humble. There's no reason for you to be humble now, right? Which, according to their own theory, is causing cancer in her. (laughs) The pushing that she's done for herself has caused her own cancer. So the pushing that she's forcing onto other people through their coaching is, I guess, through their own mindset and theory, would be causing them cancer. Okay, cool. So, again, celebrating and supporting this... 
Why? Find out. Right. Okay. So what has made you you? So I remember the first time I spoke, you spoke before me. I think maybe before or after me. We crossed each other backstage. And I know when I meet someone that's the it. Like everyone has the it, by the way. But I know when someone's released it in themselves. So I want to be very clear. Everybody's special. Everybody has the it. But I know when I've met a human being who's released theirs. Mm -hmm. And I also know when I've met somebody who is still suppressing theirs. And the ones who have released it, boy, that's really good. Those who have released it, I I magnetize to. I'm just like, whoa. And I knew it immediately. And then the second time, like, there's, she's released it. Her version of her releasing it. So you have that thing. You've unlocked yours. What is it that made you so much more successful than basically everybody else in the multiple businesses you've done? Now, looking back on it, no reason to be humble. Mm -hmm. We've bared our soul about some really difficult things today. So tell tell the truth. What did he bear his soul about? Nothing. Um, I mean, I think what what she said is that she doesn't give herself a break. She's worked for hours and hours and hours. She's never, like, she's always on. She's always saying yes and pleasing people and whatever. That's the answer. Was it worth it? I don't know. Probably not. But she's going to say because the way he's setting it up, it's like, oh, he's so proud of her. It's such a great attribute to have. It's going to now be a positive all of a sudden. What about that? Yeah. Uh, I think I have this fight in me that is ingrained in me from such a young age Mm. that I'm just willing to do whatever it takes. Mm. I I, I will not hurt people. That's Mm. about where I cross the line. I will not do anything to hurt people. Mm. Aside from that, I will dominate you. (laughs) I really will. Mm. It's just, it's not a joke. And uh, I'll, I'll go in, I'll definitely go deep in it. Mm. I will never forget when I when we first talked about the diagnosis and I said to you on a coaching call, I said, Ed, I think I need to put boss lead to rest. I think I need to just kind of chill a little bit and go more into just quiet time and whatever. And I remember seeing your face yeah. and you didn't say anything. You went, mm-hmm, okay. Mm. And I went, maybe that's not. And then I realized, no, Bossley is the reason I have all of this stuff. Is and I don't mean things. I mean the accomplishments, the mm-hmm. accolades, the wealth, the all. all ev- because she is an aggressor. She doesn't let people stomp all over her. How am I going to let cancer come in and stomp all over me? Oh, no. Like, actually, Bossley needs to show up more than ever. And so the difference with me, I think, is that when everything crazy happened— and- I thought Bossley was dead, and you put her to rest because Bossley was not helping you. I'm so confused. How come this always happens on everything self-help? The beginning of the interview, they say one thing, they make one hypothesis or one big statement about what made them successful. By the end of it, they go completely 180 and say the exact opposite. This happens so often. I don't get it. And I I mean, I'm not going to to go into a whole long childhood, whatever, but I would... People want success like ours. Mm -hmm. And I love how open you've been about things with your dad and, and your childhood more and more over the last few years because... The way I describe it is I understand you want our success, Mm -hmm. but you do not want what we've gone through. If you want all this success, you've got to trade all of this bad stuff and you're not willing to trust me. Mm -hmm. So when I'm nine and I send my dad to jail and I'm raised in a crazy domestic violence situation my whole life, I have to get raised by my grandparents because there's no one there. I become the leader of the household then. Physical violence and craziness like you've never, like you can't even imagine. We don't have enough food. That's a very interesting statement she just made. I sent my dad to jail when she was a child. That to me, and you know, at this point, it's like, I don't know, therapy may not be worth the time and effort it would take and the heartache that it, it, it you know, brings up when you're going through it. But that is not an accurate representation of what happened if she was a child. You didn't send your dad to jail. Whatever happened to her, I don't know. I'm assuming it's some sort of abuse he is a grown up and you are a child and that it's not you sending him to jail that's the to me that just shows where she thinks she's in control of everything and from telling her mom or telling the police probably what happened to her whatever that may be she, like as if like she did that to him he did it to her to me it just seems like okay this is someone who has not gone through like actual psychological not training, but like um, reevaluating, like forgiving herself as a kid. Like you, you just don't, you know, have control then. It was just, it just caught my attention. Like that one line, it just shows like, ooh, you know, you're not quite, it, it all makes sense. Like this persona, this, you know, I'm going to 
cure myself. It all sort of ties together. And if she went to real therapy, which I, I'm assuming she hasn't done a lot of, she might have been able to get through these issues and been able to kind of like let go of this stuff a little bit sooner, I think. But, you know, who knows? I'm just, it just stuck out to me. We like all of this just turmoil, chaos, whatever. I became the leader. And so when people go, you know, in sales, as an example, I have never understood why people get so upset about the word no. This one shocks me. Mm-hmm. And maybe that's why I went to eight oncologists. Like, come on. Right. Come on. It's got to be fun. <laughs> because for me, it's it's the first thing somebody tells me is never what I'm going to accept. I don't accept that for me or for my life. So mm-hmm. when someone's like, oh, they, that prospect told me no. Mm-hmm. I go, well, did your parents tell you yes about everything when you were growing up? Because mm-hmm. I was told no always. Mm-hmm. And I just kept selling myself over and over and over again to try to get something. Mm-hmm. Even if it's just, can I stay a little later? No, can I, no, no. You guys mm-hmm. would ask for ice cream three times and you'd get a yes. It was always no. <laughs> so no doesn't hurt me, yeah, right? That yeah, turned yeah. me into this. So yeah. then if I'm getting rejected, fine. And also you get scratched. I'm really scrappy from growing up without resources. So I will find a way. Yeah. You tell me it's impossible. I don't think so. There's Mm. a way. Uh, I'm super big on visualizing. Mm. You talked about touching your dreams. Mm. I've been the same way forever. Mm. I'll sit in the car. I'll go to the car dealership when I can't afford it before, Mm. you know, I couldn't afford it. I'd go see, I'd go look at the private jets and see whatever. I'd look at the big houses. I'd spent, I was spent, I found our first photo I got to show you. You have no idea. I met you at 10X was the first time I actually met you. Way back. You would, I had bright blue hair. It's craziness, right? So. That was me. I do remember that you were heavier then. Yeah, and I was right blue then. here. I remember. God, thanks, Ed. God, you were disgusting back then. I remember you. Oh, horrible. Yeah, you really look better with cancer. God, yeah. Wow, what did you do? Oh, I forgot. Oh, what, what did you do to lose the weight? Oh, oh, yeah, wait, I forgot why we're here. Sorry. Remember that. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> By the way, I've met millions of people, so I often don't remember. I rem- Ed, you have not met millions of people. Get a grip, okay? Like, looking on your Facebook <laughs> or your Instagram is not meeting people. You've not met millions of people. God, get some perspective. Remember that. I paid to be in that VIP section when I really maybe didn't. Maybe shouldn't have. Whoa, and I'm so, I remember And that. I couldn't. And there were these hu- two huge men, like seven feet tall, that you mm. got the photo with them. And then Grant, like, rushed you off. Mm. And so we have, like, a side photo. But it's our first photo we ever took. And it's it's like. You were standing I, there when I was taking yes, the picture. Sorry, go yep, ahead. Yep, exactly. Yeah, but that. I would always just insert myself where other people wouldn't mm. because people would tell me no. People would say it's impossible. People would mm. say you can't have this, you can't do that. Women don't do this. Oh, this is kind of a men's world. I learned investments and negotiation and all this stuff because people told me I wasn't supposed to. They said, oh, you're just supposed to be this network marketer. I said, network marketers fail at everything because they're lear- they're trying to learn how to recruit a bunch of people and then forget about them. Mm. I'm going to treat this like a business. And mm. if I learn business skills, unlike most people that do things like this, mm. no one's going to be able to touch me. Mm. So it's always been, where's the competitive edge? Yeah. Learn. And then I'll watch somebody maybe in the business. I think that's also another clue. Like no one's going to be able to fuck with me. You know, if I just get this skill, it's like no one should mess with you now. <laughs> you can stand up for yourself and, you know, don't have to prove yourself over and over and over again because... You are good enough as you are to be treated with respect. That's how I always think about it. Like, it's easier said than done, obviously. I don't always believe that in myself when I'm like living my life day to day, but that is the truth. You don't have to make a million dollars for now you deserve respect walking down the street. You should have that automatically. And if someone doesn't give it to you, then they don't deserve yours. That's how I feel about it. So I feel like she's got a lot of you know, proving to be, to be done. And I feel like that's tied into this whole thing too. It's like, she should be living her life for her, however long she has left, as opposed to, I'm going to prove to everyone that I can heal myself. It's like, who are you proving it to? And the only person that matters is yourself, your body, your, your life. It, Cause it's going to be gone at some point. Like you don't need to prove it to us. I don't know. It's kind of sad. The space. That's why I went to 10X. There were no networkers there, right? I went to 10X because I said, I need to learn more about businesses so I can see what they're doing in their traditional business so I can figure out how to implement that in this kind of business yeah. before I had other businesses, right? Because yeah. if I do that, then I'm not the first one to do it. I'm the first one to do it the best. The best, yeah. By the way, I'm watching you. This is you. So it's interesting. 
Like the transition. Even, by the way, you could just feel the energy a little bit. By the way, the topic's different, but the energy's different. And Boss Lee does need to show up to fight. Because she's not having to answer. How do you feel about your impending, you know, six months from now death? Like, okay. Yeah, I hope the energy will be a little bit brighter at this point, Ed. Like this fight as yes. well, right? So there's got to be both. I want to tell you one thing. I want to say something about you. I'm going to brag about you, but I want everybody to hear, see themselves in this. When I went to work at the group home, I went to work at an orphanage. You know, that was my career. Yep. And when I... Excuse me, what? He went to work at an orphanage? That was his career. I'm unaware of this. <laughs> this, this part of the biography. Okay, uh, I'm interested. I'm hooked. You got me, Ed. I went there. I've often said that I connected with these boys because anybody who's gone through any abuse or dysfunction in their childhood, we have different eyes. We do. Our eyes are just a little what? But different. When you look into the eyes of a child who's suffered, mm -hmm. they just want to be loved, and you can feel it. And I have those eyes in my form of it. You have it in yours, no matter what you've gone through. Huh? He's like, everyone's special, okay, which means no one's special, right? Everyone has trauma and their eyes are different. Okay, then they're all the same then? What I didn't know when I worked there <laughs> is that they also have different hearts. They have different hearts. What because one of the ways we get our love about? is by achieving. But we do become scrappier. We are tougher. We are more relentless. We do take more no's. We will get after you to win because we want to change how we feel so badly. We want to change how we feel so badly. And even I see your face change as I say that. Mm -hmm. And so if you've gone through any dysfunction in your life, when we meet each other, we kind of connect in a way. Like, <laughs> I don't connect as well. Trauma bonding, probably. <laughs> even if it's not like trauma bonding, uh, like the same trauma, the same event or whatever, it's like, yeah. Yeah, I find this to be true. I don't agree with what he's saying. Like, that's such a great thing to go and f search out other people who have been traumatized because you guys are scrappier and you can, like, make more, you know, scam businesses work for you better. But I think it is true that there is some comfort sometimes in, in being friends with somebody who's got some, some level of, like, trauma or issues because in my past or, you know, in my um, life, when someone's, like, pretty normal pretty okay doesn't really have much trauma from the past when you say something about your childhood or something they're like oh my god like horrified or they don't they don't understand it and it's like a little bit like "Ooh, i shouldn't have said that like i shouldn't have been weird in that moment and you can still be friends but it is nice when someone else kind of can relate maybe and maybe that's a, again like a trauma bonding thing but i have found that to be true like there is like a sense of like oh god like okay you kind of get it or like i hear like a pretty traumatic story and i'm like oh that's horrible but also like okay well this person's gonna kind of understand where i'm coming from so i i do agree with that to a degree oh with people who've had easy lives i wish i did i wish i did mm -hmm. but i often find myself gravitated towards people who have had tragedy or difficulty or abuse or neglect in their life and i used to think it's because we had the same eyes it's not why it's because we have the same hearts mm. our hearts are the same i'm getting goose and he's like, I can exploit them too because I know that they're more predisposed to being tricked in their life. So I can probably pull one over on them too real quick. <laughs> or I can exploit them on this podcast and use their story for views. Spumps. I've never said this out loud until you were just speaking. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I see in her. That's what I see in all of my great friends. It's not their eyes. It's their... It's their traumatized hearts. <laughs> God. <laughs> What a weirdo. Freaking hearts that are different because of what we've had to go through. And that's why I love you. And if you're listening to this, everybody, if you've had that, that's what you share in common with us. You have to unleash it, but it's a gift. It's a gift because your heart is just different. You're just, it's the heart literally as corny as it sounds. It's the freaking heart of a champion. It's somebody <laughs> who wants to be somebody so bad and change how they feel feel so much that they're but isn't that what's causing the cancer according to yourself <laughs> like yeah i want to do this so badly because i have this issue and the trauma and the you know whatever the dr it's driven me forward and it's actually hurt me and it killed me but he's saying it as like this is the best thing of my life it's so great that i'm able to have this like 
drive and, you know, like uh, uh, dominance over people. That's the part that like the, 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 it's not fetishization. It's like the celebration of it. It's the pedestaling of it. It's making that be such a wonderful attribute and the best attribute of humanity, really. Like Michael Jordan would never stop throwing free throws until his hands bled. It's like people just, especially Americans, I feel, love that story. We love it. We just like eat it up and think, ooh, wow, that's a heart of a champion. It's like that probably really affected his life (laughs) his actual enjoyment of life his actual day-to-day happiness probably was made worse because his hands were always bleeding you know i'm saying that i'm not saying that's a real story but like you know or like a celebrity that's got all the success all this money and then they overdose it's like what was going on there well obviously things were not you know copacetic it's like but here we are going, oh, I love this so much. Oh, I love it. It's great. It's like, ugh, we've not learned our lesson yet. You're willing to do anything. And I just realized as you were talking, I've spent most of my life trying to change how I feel. Mm-hmm. Do you relate to that? Uh, I'm like nodding like my head's going to fall off over here. It's yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. At the first time we really had a hard talk conversation, I said, I just, I just want to feel proud. Mm-hmm. This is what I told you. I'm like... I've had all this success and it's like, when is it going to be enough? When am I going to sit there and go, never <gasps> in it? Cause I just want to feel, yeah. you know, you're always chasing. Yeah. Like, and what yeah. you've learned, I think through this. Finish the thought, finish the thought. When is it going to be enough? Dot, 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 never, because that's never going to satisfy anybody because you look at it and you go, okay, what did I actually do? I sold a hundred thousand ketones. Cool. I feel the same. I'm it's, you know, it's a, it, your family drama and the, your childhood. It's not going to be solved by that, you know? And it's like, we again, don't we know this by now? Is this not obvious advice? Is like, I mean, self-help is like such obvious advice, yet we're just repeating these same things that are like, yeah, of course that's not going to work. What? My sweet friend, my brilliant friend, my powerful friend, is what you're learning through this is maybe I can keep this drive in this heart <laughs> And actually still simultaneously give myself the gift of feeling these things. I don't have to wait because when time is potentially cut short, which it's not going to be in your case, but it's threatened to be cut short. You go, yeah, enough of that crap. I'm going to feel these things now. And I'm still going to be this boss where I kick ass. I mean, I considered canceling. I considered stopping all my businesses pretty much. Mm -hmm. I considered stopping my coaching. Mm -hmm. I considered all of these things. And then I had this and I went. No, I get so much energy when I do that because I'm watching their faces. I feel I feel their hearts. I see that I'm changing them in that moment. I get off the I can't do those calls too late in the day because if I do it too late in the day, I'm like, woo! Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. let's go. And it's so healing and it's so cathartic. And it, and I do feel proud in those moments when I know that I'm shifting people's lives. And so that becomes really important to me. Uh, and I really think if more people would operate from that, that it's truly heart centered. Yeah. It's you don't have to be this crazy shark at the top. You can be a good person. I mean, I, I definitely identify as a shark in ways, yeah. but yeah. maybe you're, they, not like a, they can maybe shark. Yeah. Uh, like, <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, I, I would like, what does that actually mean? Like you are a shark or you're not a shark? <laughs> like, oh, I give good advice. So therefore I'm nice or what? Like, are you just taking people's money no matter what? Like, are you in a position where you are giving people coaching advice at this stage of your life? Like, I just, like, what are you going to tell them? Like, oh, you need to, you know, DM a hundred people tomorrow. Like, that's what, I don't know. I guess it could give her excitement or whatever, but it just seems like, again, there's like a distraction from dealing with your own life. Like, just, oh, I'm going to give other people advice. Okay, I guess if that's what you want to do. Yeah, it's just... <laughs> I, you just recognize it in people, and you can yeah. really feel that. It, that's a real thing. I feel it in you. I uh, I think this hour, by the way, has been the m- biggest difference you've ever made in your life, and you've made the difference in millions of people's lives. Uh- Excuse me? <laughs> He's going to contribute, oh, this hour with me on this podcast? is All your accomplishments are minuscule compared to one conversation with me recorded over, you know, microphones. <laughs> Okay, just take all the credit for her entire life. <laughs> I um, rarely cry. You made me cry. And I... Um, he, he cried like I this. I feel like usually when I do the show, I'm like, oh, this is going to be so good for everybody else. Uh, 
And then there's been moments saying I'm like, oh, this is really good for me. Mm. And <laughs> you're really good for me. And uh, okay. I love you very much. I'm super you. proud of you. And Again, why are you paying? Why does she have to pay you? Can, can she get a discount, please? And thank you for having the courage because this is a tough lady who's one to say, all right, I'm going to peel it back and I'm going to tell the world what's going on with me. That in and of itself took amazing courage. And the fact that you're kind of documenting this journey, you're going to be the inspiration for millions of people in different areas of their lives. And you were born for this. Everything that's happened to you in your life has prepared you for right now. Yeah. 100%. And if you're listening to this, Sad. everything that's happened in your life has prepared you for right now. If you'll unlock it, release that heart that we've talked about today. Okay. Release your heart and you will be free. Thank you. Go to bossly.com. Go to I'm Boss Lee on YouTube. What's the Instagram? I'm Boss Lee. I'm Boss Lee. Follow her journey. Um, her podcast, <clears throat> The People's Mentor, as well. While you're doing that, you're just crazy not to get the power of one more. You're. <laughs> it's his own book. While you're doing that, you'd be crazy not to buy my book. God, let this woman have a moment to herself. God, greedy, greedy shark. Greedy, greedy baby shark. <laughs> These people are. God. And while you're, you know, living and you're being inspired through Boss Lee's journey to heal stage four cancer, buy my book <laughs> of my ramblings about my workouts and my, you know, I don't know, my accomplishments in the MLM business. Shut up. Absolutely crazy not to have your email submitted at edmylet.com so that you you'd be absolutely crazy not to have your emails. <laughs> you'd be absolutely insane. <laughs> You'd be absolutely diagnosable if you did not put your email. <laughs> send this send this to seven friends or you will have bad luck just like Boss Lee did. <laughs> God. <laughs> mm. I will hex you from the studio if you do not buy my book today. And that is a guarantee. You can get early access to shows like this today. And but can I, I just say, I yeah. mean, I know I'm not, I don't need to pitch you because mm -hmm. everybody who's listening to this mm -hmm. follows you, but you have changed my life in more ways than you realize. You. you are, I wish more people got to know you how I get to know, how I've mm -hmm. gotten to know you. Thank you. You are such a pure. It makes me sad because I feel like she, um, this is just, a, this is an armchair, psychologically um, unproven anything, you know, thought here, but I feel like, just based on what she said in this one interview, that she's got, you know, dad issues. Obviously, everyone does. Well, I shouldn't say everyone does. I do as well. So I feel like I can kind of speak to it a little bit. <clears throat> that she's got, her, you know, issues with her dad, obviously, according to herself. That this man, Ed Millette, represents in some way a, me, a, a father figure to her. And so she's paying him money to be in his presence. She's, you know, complimenting him and, and, and talking about him and giving him all this, like, exposure and credit and all this stuff. Meanwhile, like, you know, she doesn't owe him anything, really. And now even this, she's like, oh, you've helped me so much. And I called you. It's like, that's a control contractual ob obligation that he has apparently you're paying him out like like five figures of money to again have this access you don't need to kiss his ass too <laughs> you're paying for his ass you don't need to kiss his ass but i wonder if it's it fits because of like a family thing or her dad or she like she didn't get the approval or she has guilt about the sending her dad to jail which again i do not agree with that that's what happened like in the sense of a man does something, a little child's not responsible for, you know, holding them accountable, but whatever. Um, that, that's why she's, she's acting like this as opposed to actually getting value from what he's saying, because he said nothing other than like, if I was to look at this as an outsider, be like, Oh, he really brought up your trauma seven times, pitched his own book at the end and then asked for everyone's email. <laughs> it's like, Oh, your soul. You. And I try to pour as much love into you as I do you because do. I, <laughs> there is so much greatness in you and I know you know you're great but you, you're better than anybody that just listens to the show or watches you online or walks past you behind stage and I think also like I think that's a great point um Emily to your your uh comment and I didn't know that obviously that that's what happened but <clears throat> you know Ed seems to be like 
a yes guy, you know, someone who's just going to agree with whatever the guest says, you know, as long as it's in agreement with his brand, which is buy my shit, <laughs> you know, and she's definitely on brand with that. So yeah, I think that's why she likes him. Cause it's like, Oh, you, you feed my delusion. You enable me. That's what she's asking for. That's what she wants. She doesn't want to be told the truth about what's going on, but that's what self-help teaches you. Self-help teaches you ignore truth, be around, surround yourself with delusion, and that will make you happy. And as we know, it doesn't. You could ever imagine. Thank and you. our relationship that has evolved Come over this, this last half year, especially, like I truly treasure you as a friend, as a person, as a coach, as a mentor, and you. you're doing more work in this world than you realize. Thank and you. Uh, I want to give you your flowers too Thank while you. you're still here. because means the world coming from you. amazing. Thank you. you that really means are. the world coming from you. Um, you know, guys, every show I say share this, I don't think I probably have to ask you to this week, but like this message of this hour people need to experience they just do and don't keep it to you please share it with other people god bless you all max out max out his name max all of a sudden oh lordy lordy wow and look who's here taroki and look her eyes are so green it's it's now showing the ocean Tara, I look in your eyes and I see, I see you and me, and it's your heart that I really care about. She's like, okay, <laughs> whatever. Here's my butt. <laughs> you cutie pie. Aw, I love you. I kiss your butt. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, Ed Millette sucks. <laughs> I already knew that, but, um, uh, I didn't read as even a, like a, portion of it yet I have the book I have I didn't waste time I did buy that book that he has so I can review it at some point the power of one more um, but I brought it with me to Europe thinking that I was going to be on these trains and stuff and have time to read but I, we were like talking and hanging out and stuff so I didn't actually read it but I did bring his book to Europe with me to hate read it and I have not gotten the chance to do it yet so um yeah uh, did we ever find out where she, um, bossy t called those doctors chemo pimps? I'm curious. Also, I don't have her on Instagram. She blocked my Instagram from when I talked about her Columbia retreat. So, um, I have to sign out or do that like Instagram thing to watch anything from Instagram. <clears throat> but, uh, bossy, if you know where it's at, uh, let me know holla back but yeah it seems like a mess a mess of a situation um that's not going well i guess so it seems and i don't know yeah i don't know it seems messy very messy um yeah i know the thirty thousand dollars thing <laughs> you deserve thirty thousand dollars you deserve thirty thousand kisses so there's a side note about tarot tarot went to the vet yesterday to get her yearly uh, shots and to get her flea medicine and she did so good she was such a good girl she everyone loves her everyone's like because she so she purrs as you can tell she purrs so much that they have a hard time hearing her in the stethoscope see <laughs> they can't hear her heart so they had to like <laughs> they had to like try to scare her for a second so that she would stop purring because she's such a purry girl and then she did it and her heart is good and her teeth are really good she just needs to lose a little bit of weight but other than that she's perfect can you believe that what do you have to say <laughs> she says mm, okay she's like don't bring me outside of the house ever again <laughs> but no she was she was really good she was um she was a trooper she did not uh complain and that was because she had to go in the carrier for like a minute but she um, got held in the car which helped a lot so um okay sorry i'm looking through what info do i need to send can you s <clears throat> dc can you send me the do you know or can i look it up which video she talks about the chemo pimps and that people who do have do chemo are bitches <laughs> i would love to see that <laughs> 
that video if that does in fact exist and i'm sure it does i'm just i have not seen it so it's alleged until i see it with my very own eyes right kitty right right um i was watching her <laughs> this video today but this one is from a month ago as well so i think things have probably been updated from then <clears throat> But she was talking about uh, going to MD Anderson and having, in her experience, a bad experience because they were pushing the chemo on her, apparently. Um, so I got to that point 27 minutes in and she didn't say anything. I sent them the link because MD Anderson asked. Let me grab the link. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so I, you know, from the Ed Millette podcast she did say like you know this is my story this is not about advice this is what I'm doing and but they did say like I'm gonna heal I'm gonna inspire people through my own self-healing so that's kind of like okay well if I'm gonna be inspired by your self-healing journey then I obviously wouldn't do chemo <laughs> like she didn't but you know okay they still did the disclaimer so at least that's there uh okay sorry I'm refreshing the page. Yeah. Yeah, usually she pees too. Tarot. I'm telling your private information. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, welcome, Jordis. Jordis eight. Welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you for choosing sadness today. <clears throat> oh, Emily, she's been looking for the videos. Okay. Well, maybe we can, let's see what all she's got on here. Let's she's too loud. Else. She's too crazy. She goes live too much. Eh. This is from a month ago, too. Oh, well, yeah. Ugh, don't look at that it's thumbnail. It's a little bit graphic for moi. <laughs> what about TikTok? Hold on. Oh, wait, she found a hold on. Uh, I decided to call the collection the Danielle Brown. Every time I open TikTok, that this exact Bernstein. video pops up. The name was extremely important. Boss Lee. I am Boss Lee. Okay. Oh, this is from nine hours ago. Okay, let's just see what's going on. Oh, she looks a little different even. Looks a little thinner maybe from last time that she was on this podcast. <clears throat> it says little cancer update scared nervous la 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 scan scan anxiety i think they call it okay let's see hi it's jesse lee and on this episode of jesse lee heals from stage four colon cancer i'm your host jesse lee and i'm going to give you an update by the way i am in israel uh, i just got back from egypt and this is going to be my first ever shabbat dinner with uh my partner's family so i'm excited and nervous Anyway, so I feel good, except for this cyst that is an ovarian cyst on my right ovary constantly hurts. Uh, so I've been taking Tylenol and Advil rotating those to try to just kind of numb that pain. Occasionally I have to take a tramadol, which is terrible because then I'm like a walking zombie. So zero out of 10, I thought tramadol was helping a lot, but I really actually hate tramadol. I don't know if anyone's ever taken it, but like not a fan. I'm surprised she's taking Tylenol. That's gotten kind of a negative rap in the last couple years with the wellness woos they're like Tylenol is the worst and you know there is some studies that say certain things but they I think it's a little blown out of proportion <clears throat> but um yeah I'm surprised she's not like against that too to be honest um so anyway other update though when I get back to America on Monday I'm actually going to be getting my pet scan so I haven't had a pet scan since March or late February or something like that um, I would just like an update and see what's going on. Lymph nodes in my neck are still swollen, which just kind of freaks me out. I feel great overall, but when you don't have all the information, it just causes a lot of nervousness. So with that said, I am nervous. Don't fall. Uh, don't fall. So send good vibes, please. Um, and then right after that, I'm going to go to treatment in Malibu for almost two weeks, and then I'll head off to Europe again. And so that's kind of just my plan of action right now. So that's pretty much it. That's where I am with all of that. Um, I'll keep you updated, like I said, but um, hoping for at least a reduction in the cancer. If not, obviously, no evidence of disease is always the goal. Uh, 
and I guess we'll just find out and wait and see. So I'm still doing a lot of stuff, obviously. Um, I've upped a lot of ozone, which I can talk to you guys about in a different TikTok. Um, and we'll see. So anyway, I'm sleepy right now because I did not get good, good, great, whatever sleep last night. Um, and like I said, I took a tram at all. So, but I was in Jerusalem today. I did pray at the Western Wall and uh, all's going to be fine. All right. Okay, every cell in my body is going back the way it's supposed to be, okay? Better than ever. Anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. And like I said, all the prayers and good wishes and whatever are definitely appreciated. Pet scan is 8.30 a.m. Central Standard Time on Monday, August 28th. Okay, bye. So yeah, that was from nine hours ago. So that's like the most recent update. So she's going around doing different treatments it seems like she's in israel going to malibu for two weeks and then going back to europe so she's got a plan of some sort um it's interesting uh thank you dc dc said just email okay let me let me get that hold on thank you in the meantime i just have this to say i just have to say this to you dc people want their news from flawless beautiful faces and that's why I'm here to deliver it. And also, you're not freaking fine. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, okay. I see it. I see it. I see it. I see it. Um, so it's an hour and 35. Do you know by chance <laughs> if it's towards the top or towards the bottom? <laughs> this is from March 29th. Okay. So March 29th. So this, so the, so sh the Ed Millette podcast came several weeks after so i guess that was more damage control saying like okay i am um no longer thinking this way about chemo so i guess that's the better of this the way for it to go to not like chemo and then publicly state that and then later on backtrack that she probably should have said like in the past i've made these statements and now i'm going back on that because i found out that it's actually not that bad and people shouldn't demonize it like i used to but you know i guess you can't expect too much from people um and the chat is now covering your face wait me the chat's covering my face <laughs> but my flawless beautiful face <clears throat> this is a boss Lee soundbite actually that I You cut. sadistic bitch. <laughs> that was her from the Columbia retreat. Okay. Um, wait, can you see me? Uh, hold on, I'm looking at these. The long videos which has timestamps. Okay. Oh, thank you, DC. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm looking. Uh, okay. Let's see. Oops. Hold on. Actually, hold on. Before we do this, we'll wait for the timestamps if they come. If you can't get them, don't don't stress, um, DC. But let's, because that was from so long ago, March, which is around the time where she got diagnosed, I believe, or she had her surgery. So maybe she was more upset. I don't know. I want to give her the benefit of the doubt, I suppose, I guess, because it is like, you know, hard to deal with all this stuff. And maybe she was just like, I don't know, experiencing like the, the shock of it. But um, I'm interested about what's going on now. Um, okay, this was from three days ago. It is responding to someone who says, wait, she doesn't take the ketones she was selling for so long anymore. And then um, the response from her is still number one in the world at this. Not everyone quits on every business they start. And for me, having a business that I make multi-millions a year without talking about anymore has made my healing a journey I cannot explain the gratitude for. Everyone should join, prove it. Okay. That is one way to <laughs> spin it, I guess. And it's not playing, but I guess that's the answer. There you go. Okay, and this is from four days ago. Okay, so she's in Tel Aviv. Let's see. Hi, I'm in Tel Aviv, and I want to tell you how I saved $4,000 getting here. If you don't know, my partner is Israeli. Say shalom. Sh oh, wow. I never saw him before. He usually is off camera. He's usually, uh, he's usually like this mysterious voice from the side of the camera so there he is there's the boyfriend yeah oh she's like i'm i don't like boyfriends i'm leaving i don't want to be around for the boyfriend part of the conversation i'm gonna spin you around okay hold on i'm just spinning back so i can click the button okay shalom 
And when we were looking for flights to come here for our wedding, uh, we looked at flights from DFW, which is where I live, to Tel Aviv, which the flights for business class, because there was no first class on America and there's not really any first class cabins, was almost $8,000 round trip. So I decided to make the educated decision to pay attention to the three cities in America that have the highest population of Israeli immigrants. Okay. <laughs> so stupid. I am so smart that I hacked my way to Israel for cheaper via thinking about where they live. Here, okay, I don't know. Like Again, get off the internet. What is this? What do we care? Stop trying to prove yourself. Everyone's just trying to prove themselves. Look at my, look at me. I'm trying to prove myself. I'm so smart. I can, you know, analyze this person's life. God, we're all like in a cycle. It's never going to end well. That would be Miami, LA, and New York. So instead of taking my flights directly from DFW and letting them choose the flight routes and all this kind of stuff, I decided to book directly from either one of those three locations. I ended up choosing JFK. It was the least expensive and also made the most sense instead of flying backwards to go forwards. So then all I did was I booked a flight from DFW to JFK. It was 9,000 points, and then I got upgraded to first class because of concierge key. And instead of an $8,000 round trip business class flight because I will not fly more than five hours without a bed, I was able to get to Tel Aviv, which is where we are right now. Right, babe? Yes, where we, are. Are we Where are we going right now? We're going to Haifa. And we're on our way to Haifa uh, for 4,300. He looks thrilled to be on this video. <laughs> US dollars round trip and 18,000 round trip points from JFK, DFW, JFK, JFK, DFW. And that's that. Follow along for more travel tips. Well, usually cancer stuff, but you know. We're traveling. Okay, interesting piece of content right there. Sounds again like this is life changing advice, guys. This is life changing. Okay, so that was like I said four days ago, uh, and then this is from the fifth. Hello, and welcome to which is like what two weeks ago. Okay. Here we are. She looks a little different in this one again. Uh, it says step by step. I suppose I would love for the day when it's all completely over. But I know it's going to be a journey, trying to support my digestive health even more because I know that's why my tongue is turning white again. And that's so annoying. Okay. Interesting. So her what, tongue is turning white again. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Jesse Lee Heals from Stage 4 Colon Cancer. I'm your host, Jesse Lee. You can follow and ask questions in the comments. <laughs> What's up? So I, first of all, have no idea how long it takes to pass a kidney stone, but I really don't think I've passed it still. Um, really dull pain, though. Not that serious. Don't need pain meds hardly ever, even at night, which is nice. I was waking up around 5 in the morning, so that was annoying. I am about to go to a oncologist who focuses on women's health, like reproductive organs, et cetera, kind of cancers. Um, just because I have had, I don't even know if it's still there. I've been castor oil packing it so much. Uh, the ovarian cyst in my right cyst or my right ovary. I also don't think it's there because I don't have any pain anymore when anything's inside me, if you know what I mean. That was like my big red flag. And I'll keep you guys up on that, I suppose. I don't really know what she's going to do. I will not be doing a biopsy or anything like that. It's just completely unnecessary and invasive. Uh, but let's see what she says. Also, my last CT scan was about five weeks ago. So I don't want to do any CT scans. I don't want to do anything with any kind of radiation yet. Somebody did ask a question about, you know, how many PET scans have you done? Or when's your next PET scan? Um, I only did the one PET scan in February. Have not done a PET scan since. Uh, and I have done... So she's going to do one this Monday <clears throat> was the update. So, okay several CTs though that have good news so considering possibly doing a PET scan again maybe in like two months because that would be a three month mark for radiation exposure uh but I don't really know I still feel really good my only complaint currently would be my stomach is kind of crampy and gassy not from gastritis anymore because I've really started to narrow down a lot of the things that were causing bloat and inflammation like that I guess this is a diverticulitis that they were talking about I just feel like I can never suck, like I know I'm a skinny person, okay, but like I can never suck in my stomach at all. So I feel like I have like a little bit of a toad belly, uh, which gets, you know, progressively more toady throughout the day. So that's my only complaint. I don't know if you've ever heard of anything like that or if you have any like suggestions for anything like that. Not even sure if that's even remotely cancer related or maybe that's food related or something. Been off all supplements for a month now, which is very weird uh, for me. Uh, I feel like my tongue is going back to like, not looking as good as it was so i'm like i want my supplements back so i'm gonna talk to my doctor about that today but anyway because your tongue will basically tell you everything right uh, i don't like that i don't like how this looks so that's that okay no worries dc that's okay 
I appreciate you looking. Yeah, it's just, this is all a weird situation. It's like fluid, <laughs> very fluid, it seems like. We got PET scans and CAT scans and this country and this supplement and this juice and this vegan diet. And then I went to keto and then I went to this oncologist. It's like, yeah, I, I think it just shows it's a sort of representative of the chaoticness in which this is all uh, taking place within, which is sort of scary it's not not you know usually if things are going well you are locked into a treatment plan but you know obviously that's not what's going on here go put some stuff in your butt (laughs) as always (laughs) oh i love you guys appreciate you and um that's really my only update but i'm feeling good energy's great i've been sleeping really really well and just one day at a time one day at a time i feel like i look good though no filter, not a man, not a man jelly bean. Okay. <laughs> I will say, I will say, you know, I think this is sort of interesting in the sense of like our relationship to social media and and how it's become this replacement for intimacy, <laughs> I guess. Not intimacy, like sexually, but like, you know, uh, you know, like talking that that these types of things, like updating your friends as Facebook once was, or MySpace, like putting up a photo and going, "This is what I'm doing today," or "This is what I'm eating today," or whatever. You know, slowly that was like what you would tell your family. You'd have your dinner and you'd sit at a table and you'd talk about what you did today, or you'd whatever. And then slowly it became like, "I'm not going to talk my talk to my family necessarily. I'm going to tell the entire world." But now we just, and I find myself doing this too. It's like we've become like, it doesn't even have to be someone on the other end. Like you're just, you're giving off your information as if people care, but like, you don't even need to get the feedback at all. It's just interesting. It's just, cause this is all stuff we don't need to know. Like we, I, again, like I don't know her. None of us know her. We don't need to know when her scans are at this time. Like that's something that someone close to you would need to know. Like, oh, it's at 8 a.m. on central time. I gotta be there, you know, wish me luck. And now it's become this thing where it's like, no one in particular needs this information yet everyone's gonna get it. it it's, there's something missing. And I wonder how that's gonna affect humanity. <laughs> I, I keeps me that's what keeps me up at night like how is this going to affect humanity because I find it to be harder and harder to care about people and things like I, I just really feel desensitized to things as of late like in the last couple of years like you know tragedies will happen and I'm just like I feel bad but I don't you know I feel like that oh I see it so much I see so much you get desensitized and I feel like this is also part of it like if I was talking to a friend or a family member, like the conversation would mean something to me, but I don't even do that very often anymore. I'm just talking to myself and then posting it. It's like, what happens to a society when you're not getting feedback, but yet you're talking at people all day long? How does that affect our brains? Someone do a study. Somebody do a study. Uh, And this one says, this was from August 9th and someone it was a comment and said, and then there's people like me that I absolutely refuse to take advantage of the system. I don't know what she's responding to, but it says, how's that feel? Know your worth. Uh, Try saying something like, I don't think that I'm valuable enough and my time is valuable enough and my items are valuable enough and my inconvenience doesn't actually matter that I'm going to pay attention more to a multi-billion dollar airline who just took a $5.8 billion bailout that they didn't actually need instead of getting my belongings back. I don't know. It's out of context. Hey, it's okay. Let's make me look at a couple more and then we'll wrappy wrap on this stuff. Uh, okay, this is just poop emojis and laughing emojis, again, from August 8th, this one is. Hey, it's Jesse Lee, and on this episode of Jesse Lee Heals from Stage 4 Colon Cancer, naturally, make sure you follow along and ask any questions. I just had my first colonic, <laughs> and all I really wanted to say is, yes, I loved it, duh, do you know how many coffee enemas I do? And then I would like to confirm that anybody who doesn't like me, I would like to let you know that this amazing woman just told me I am literally, literally, not just figuratively, not full of shit. <laughs> she goes, it's amazing. I love when people do enemas all the time because you have way less poop than most people. So anyway, I feel great. Have a good one. Put some stuff in your butt today. Bye. 
Like, I feel like that post, you know, is fine, whatever. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know what else I can really say about it that I've already not said in the last couple hours. But, you know, again, like, that would be a risky thing, like, to tell a friend that, like, ah, oh, ha, ha, I just did this, and I don't have my poop in my butt, and da, 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 But you'd have to get the feedback. Again, like, that person would be like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, God, are you okay? Or, like, they may see concern for her. Like, are you okay for real? Because you seem like you're okay, but I know that you're not, so let's talk about it. Again, there's, there's less confrontation when you just post it to the internet and move on with your day there's no like someone on the other side going you need help or like you need support or how can i assist you it's just like the one-sided no feedback conversation so i never okay this is like about her bags thing hey it's jesse lee and on this episode oh, okay she's talking about her kidney stones what's going on guys Oh, this is when she was at the wedding with Heidi. This is when worlds collided, when she, uh, her and Heidi were at a, a wedding together. Um, so this is going back to July. Okay, this will be the last one. Let's, let's wrap it here. This is from July 25th, and it says, Hey, are you doing okay? Haven't seen you recently. Hi, it's Jesse Lee, and I want to answer your question if I'm doing okay. Haven't seen me recently. Yeah, I'm great. I've only gotten updates that are super positive lately. Uh, and so I know this is like my cancer update channel and also cancer is a tricky bitch. So you have to stay on top of it, but I really feel amazing. My energy has been super high. Um, and I've just been like, doing my house, getting plants, turning into a plant mom reading. I got a Kindle. So I'm spending like five hours a day reading. <laughs> and today I was on the Ed Milet podcast. So you guys can check that out too, but I'm really doing well. And um, the scans that came back that I updated you guys on are still just heavy in my heart and just keeping me pushing. Uh, actually, I guess kind of an interesting update. I stopped taking all supplements currently because I was having a crazy bout of gastritis uh, about two weeks ago. My stomach, I was like, wow, this is really bad. And uh, so I stopped all supplements for the time being. I started RNA treatment actually. Um, and that's kind of my updates with that, but no stomach pain. And now I've just been trying to figure out what causes stomach pain, which so far I figured out that for sure, walnuts, walnuts which I love walnuts. I could just eat walnuts like a little chipmunk or whatever all day long. But um, no, guys, I'm doing great. And your love and appreciation and prayers and support and everything all over, everything is just like, I don't even know how to begin to say thank you for all of this love. And I know the journey is not over. So this isn't like a, I'm healed, goodbye, uh, at all. This is like, I've just had really good news. So I'm off again to go do some treatments today. I'm about to go head out for some vitamin C, some infrared, etc. After I make my juice, I want I want a smoothie. I want to make a smoothie, and that's that. Uh, just been doing my thing, and yeah. I was also in Colorado. I've uh, been traveling. I had some Maryland this weekend, and just doing the most speeches and and having fun. But it's really cool saying yes to things in business you want to say yes to, and then everything you've wanted to say no to you don't have to do anymore. So I'm at that stage and I feel great and that's about it. So still here, of course, to answer any and all questions you guys have. I want this to be an open book and this week's episode on my YouTube channel. Hopefully you guys all subscribed over there because I did do episode two. <sighs> I mean, I don't know how I would deal with this. I, I think I'm like, oh, why would you want to promote this or like not promote, but like, you know, why do people want to create content around something that's so serious or sad or when you could be doing other things? But then I think, you know, what am I doing with my free time? Like I enjoy making videos and talking and, you know, contemplating these things in life and talking shit about the self-help industry. And it's like, yeah, I don't think I would change that and decide I don't like it anymore just because I, you know, got a bad, got some bad news. So I feel like I don't want to judge that. Like, because uh, my first reaction is like, oh God, YouTube channel, YouTube video about your diagnosis, oh, explo exploitative. But also, like, it doesn't seem like, but also, hold on. <laughs> but also, you know, she doesn't need the money, I guess. It's just maybe her way of coping. So I don't want to judge that too harshly. Um, it, it, when it comes to like, I'm doing this to heal myself and it's healed me and look and all that stuff. I mean, she's not the first one to do that. 
um, like the one person she mentioned, the Chris beat cancer guy, he does that for sure. There's been other people who've written books about, I healed my own cancer by swimming in the water. You know, some guys I follow that said that literally wrote a book about I'm swim and I, and I healed myself like, okay. And there's this other woman who's associated with Gabby Bernstein that, you know, allegedly healed her cancer. So it's, there's a niche industry here. And I think maybe she's trying to put all her eggs in this basket and go, well, you know, I, I, the, my options are limited here. If it does somehow by a strike of a miracle work out, then I can have another business that I can, you know, run for years and years because people will be so overtaken by my story. And if it doesn't work, then, well, what does it matter anyways, I guess, which is a kind of sad outlook, but, you know, seemingly what it is. Um, and I think a lot of her friends and, and colleagues seem to be associated with this, like, you know, MLM lifestyle. And I'm sure they're having to continue working and doing all this stuff because it takes so much effort and so much, you know, recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. Like I read, um, Hey Hun, uh, before I went to Europe and, you know, just hearing her story, Emily's story about, you know, um, having to constantly be keeping up with everybody and she was getting huge paychecks, but you can't let the foot off the brake for very long or else you're going to lose all your, you know, like recruits and you got to keep them motivated. And it's just like, so I feel like she's probably spending a lot of time alone, you know, dealing with this and it sucks for her um so what else couldn't she be doing she might as well i guess feel that sense of socialization feel like she's interacting with people even if it's just her to a camera i get that it's it's not a good replacement i think and i think it's something we should talk about more as a society once again about having to go back and try to reconnect with people again because we're losing it and i feel like we're gonna lose our minds at some point <laughs> in the near future if we don't take care of it at some point but also you know i don't have any solutions so don't ask me <laughs> don't ask me well i i watched some of the debate highlights from yesterday and i'm like Pff. i think all these people are saying dumb things but don't ask me <laughs> what my opinion would be because <laughs> i don't know nothing i don't know anything this is supposed to be ed my let's backyard by the way this is uh, where i'm located today um, yeah. Okay. Well, Hey, we almost made it to three minutes or three minutes. <laughs> this has been a three minute stream. Thanks for joining. Uh, three hours. Um, that's pretty good. I, I was expecting it to be shorter. Uh, so I'm glad that we, we extended it. I was like, I'm coming back. I'm just like easing into it the next second. Three hours go by. Um, okay. So I'm going to sing my song and I'm going to do the story. Um, also, uh, this week I'm going to double i'm gonna match the the donation so um manatee festing shirts if you have purchased one or any of them not just shirts any any uh, merch that's got the manatees on it excuse me um i'm gonna match the donation starting tomorrow and we'll i'll do the uh i'll show you what it is here it is so if you've purchased one of these things or if you purchase one tonight um i will match the donation so 100 percent of the profits 100 percent. so i'm not making any money the company will spring will make money off of this um but anything that comes uh to me will be going straight to the save the manatee club and um that is obviously meant to save the manatees <laughs> if you couldn't tell by the name and I just listened to this disturbing podcast from the New York Times um, on the Daily the other day about how Florida, you know, the waters off the Keys are like 100 degrees now and that it's killing all the coral. So there's not a better time than now to start to try to save the wildlife um, and the marine life because <laughs> it's hot down here. And, you know, manatees love hot water, so they should be fine with that. Um specific issue but manatees do suffer when algae blooms come and kill off their vegetation and and when um you know other things can cause uh, stress to manatees specifically so it doesn't mean that you know the warming waters are not going to be affecting them at all so anyways i'm going to do that i'll probably make a post here uh, or record a video and then also on instagram and such and we can celebrate raising money and helping the manatees and also you get to you know wear a manatee on your shirt and make fun of manifesting people <laughs> or you can do it too i don't know you can do whatever you can believe in it or not it doesn't really matter either way <laughs> oh, okay
<laughs> Part-time jujitsu. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see. What did you say? What did you say? Uh, what's our percentage if we recruit people to buy shirts? Uh, 120%. <laughs> it's double. It's 200%. It's double what I'm giving to the, um, the nonprofit. That's how it works. It's a pyramid, but it's inverted. So you'll actually, you know, we'll have to pay you money or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Good question. I don't have an answer. Um, okay, cult. True. Where is that? Okay. Like I said, I have to uh, find my sound bites again. Okay. Oh, okay. Cult. There you go. Here's another one. Let's tune into this ankle. Um, question. Let me know quickly in the uh, chat. Do you want a Rachel Hollis, Heidi Powell episode update? <laughs> I have been watching through Reddit and kind of keeping my uh, updates through there. I have not listened to or watched any Rachel Hollis content, but her tour tour is still going on, shockingly. Uh, she went to Spain to do an, the El Camino trail, which I want to do now. I, I've heard of it before, but I had never, um, understood it. And now that she's done it, I'm like, I want to do it too, but actually do it like the real version, not just like a half-assed version. Like apparently she did. Um, and also what else did she do? I don't know her and her booth thing. She like got her hair cut and she's got nails again, like long nails again, which was not what he likes. So is there trouble in paradise or she's standing up for herself finally or what? I don't know, but we'll have to find out via uh, her vlogs or, or, um, you know, blogs, not tonight, not tonight, but in the future, maybe next week. Um, okay. Everyone says yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes, please. Um, yeah. And then, uh, Heidi, you know, is, I don't know. Heidi's being, Heidi, I can't, I watch her stuff all the time and it's just like, are you okay? She's gone on like 20 vacations, six weddings. She's, you know, just go, 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 go. I'm just like, oh gosh. Oh gosh. Oh golly. Day gom, take a break, girl. That's what I say to my phone when I watch Heidi Powell stories. Um, and if you want to watch a funny, I made a funny on my Instagram. Mm. A wannabe funny. Uh, actually, making fun of Heidi Powell. Hey, guys. Here, I'll just play it. Guys. Tell me if this is not Heidi Powell. <laughs> uh, you guys. You guys. I have something very, very important to say. <laughs> Did I record the okay. actual one? So, you guys. I am going to stop posting on Instagram. I'm so sorry I have not been present uh, here for you guys, <laughs> my true family. It's been Twins. real, you guys. I learned a lesson today that I also learned seven times in the last month. Crotch shot. And conveniently, the lesson is I need to love myself more. <laughs> And every time I learn a lesson, I go on a little vacay. <laughs> yeah. So I go on a little vacation for myself to congratulate myself on relearning the lesson that I just learned. And um, yeah, this, this lesson I'm going to learn is treat myself, take myself to the spa. <laughs> Um, I am too pretty to have to work a job. I'm single <laughs> and I'm choosing that. I am choosing that, you guys. I keep True. getting asked about that. And yes, yeah. hey guys. <laughs> it was actually longer, but it got, got cut off. So, you know, you get the gist. So that's Heidi Powell in a nutshell. If you don't even need to go to Heidi Powell's Instagram to know what's going on, just watch that <laughs> Instagram over and over again. Um, but yeah, she did another one with Craig, our friend Craig, Craigy Poo. How about you? This is gold, straight up. So he's a he's a best selling author now, you guys, <laughs> as it shows behind him, Craig Siegel, the re reinvention formula, how to unlock a bulletproof mindset to upgrade your life. Oh my God! Wow, so original. I love it. 
Um, so maybe we can watch that. I don't know. He just talks about himself and his book. So his thing. Okay. So I found out a little trivia about Craig. You know what the CLS experience is? The CLS experience. So this is the one that's got, this is the little preview one that I showed you before. Um, his name is Craig, like Lester Siegel or something. <laughs> so it's, ba- his whole brand is based on his initials. But then he's got um, the CLS experience. And you're like, so what is that? Is it just the Craig experience? No, it's, oh my God, I forgot now. It's um, creating symph- symphony, wait, CLS, creating legendary symphony or something. Hold on, I gotta find it. Craig will explain, hold on. I learned it and then I instantly forgot it. Uh, CLS experience. <laughs> I was like, this is so ridiculous. Oh, here it is. Okay, what is the CLS experience? <laughs> Get ready to hear the most New York person that you've ever heard in your life if you haven't heard from Craig before. Ready? Wait, oh, I can't hear it. Craig? How come? They ask me why I continuously get tattoos. It's very simple. For me, it's an expression. Depending upon the season of life that I'm currently in, I typically get something that inspires me or how I'm feeling at that season. As I continue to grow and evolve, it's nice to look back and they continue to inspire me. I love tattoos. That's just my thing. We all have outlets. You dig? People often ask me. Okay. <laughs> God, he's so funny. He's so entertaining. I love it. Okay, what is the CLX experience? I need to know. Craig, why is it? quiet hold on what is cls okay here come on less what is what is cls well number one it's cultivate lasting symphony and a play on my initial cultivate lasting symphony what in the goddamn world does that mean (laughs) you dig i don't get it someone someone please explain creating Last, I get that he's trying to use his name, but why in God's name? <laughs> Cultivate Wait, lasting. lasting symphony is a stupid, stupid thing to say. <laughs> it does not mean anything, <laughs> sir. This is posted two months ago. It's 12 views and it makes sense because that doesn't make sense. <laughs> okay, start over. Sorry. And then we'll, we'll end. What is CLS? Well, number one, it's Cultivate Lasting Symphony and a play on my initials, Craig Landon Siegel. But what is it really? It symbolizes reinvention, to think and play bigger, to take bigger. advantage of the moment. When I say the moment, the very reason why we're all here with big desires, a mission, and an assignment. And it's our responsibility to fulfill that assignment and to contribute to this world. CLS, you dang. Okay, so his thing is now you dig, I guess. Um, his coach, uh, who he probably pays a trillion dollars to a minute, said you got to end all of your videos with a catchy phrase like, you got it, you, you know, yeah, like and follow. And he's like, I got the perfect one. You dig? And he's like, ah, yes, that's it. That's straight up gold. This is gold, straight up. Also, it's juicy. Priceless, juicy nuggets. Oh, anyways. <laughs> okay. So we'll do some Craig stuff next time. I think that sounds good. I, I need some Craigy in my life. Some Craigles. Craigles and Peggles. Okay. Um, toodaloo. <laughs> I'm going to sing my song. And thank everyone that became a member. And if you'd like to join the membership, there's a link below. And also, yeah, uh, I'm coming back slowly. I don't know. I haven't decided on dates or days or anything. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back fluid, like I said. So I'll let you know. I'll try to get a little bit more in advance so you have advanced warning when I'm coming live. Um, yeah. Thank you. This has been fun. This was really good. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed coming back and being being here with all of you guys, connecting with you one on one. Um, I know you can see in my traumatized eyes that I really care, and that you also can see that you care too. So, you dig? Bye. See ya. That's the one I was looking for. That's the one I'm looking for. I 
all want a chill song cause it's Friday night and it's getting light. Starry nights, you make my heart beat faster than a fire flight. What's that? It's when fire rises in the sky. Nicole Campbell, she makes me cry. I don't know why, but I will sigh cause it happens all the time. Heather DeMaio. Does anyone call you Heather DeMaio? Pass the Heather DeMaio and mustard, please. But then I may sneeze. A chew. I got my sneeze all over you, Tiffany. She says, that's okay. I was just walking away. And then I say, bless me. Bless Chels Marie. She likes to sing for free at the cabaret. They want to pay, but they say no way. Cause she does it for free, cause that's her passion. And Rainy Cannon knows about passion. Rainy Cannon, Rainy Passion. They're just raining down from a cannon. Cannonballing into the pool. That's their passion, and they have no rules. But one time they belly flopped and it traumatized them and they stopped it. So now she's, or now they gotta build it up again to be able to cannonball in. You can do it. Alaska Blatundra. We always have so much fun, Dra. Especially when it's snowing and there's mooses outside. Or polar bears. Crystal G. What's your favorite animal? Mm, I think it's probably bees. Because they buzz around and they give me some honey. Oh yeah. Lisa B. Also loves bees. Because they have some knees. That they kneel on to get into the trees. Wow, no one can stop me now. <laughs> and Joms, we know what Joms' favorite thing to do is play with Tom. Tom Tom, the GPS from the early 2000s. Remember that, guys? <laughs> hey, guys, remember that? Yes, Jom says, mm-hmm, Jom says, I was actually a, uh, what's the other brand? Not Tom, it was Tom Tom, and there was another one. That one was called, that one was called looking at a compass or looking at a map from Barnes and Noble. A console knows all about that. They love maps, and that's a fact. Lindsay Walden. They never used a map because they just walk aimlessly. They're doing grounding all day, walking on the Earth's soil to energize their toes and their toes boil their feet boils that's what I meant to say mm. and Kara Soto if she's Dorothy then I'm Toto <laughs> yes we're gonna travel on the yellow brick road with Heather Hope do you have a heart Nope. Do you have a brain? Nope. Do you have courage? Nope. <laughs> what do you need from the wizard then? 
Heather. I need to find the Pope. Um, okay. Mm, not Jenna Cash. I see this common come in. Garmin. <laughs> exactly, wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> it was Garmin, the other GPS. Not Jenna Cash says that was not my pick. She loved MapQuest. Print out the directions and then I'll follow it until I make a wrong turn. Then we're screwed. But hey, somehow it always worked out, right? We always made it home. Just had to ask some, for some help at the gas station. El Cholo's kid would be waiting outside, ready to navigate someone to the highway. That's when life was fun, back in the day, with no cell phones and lots of things didn't cost as much and didn't make us pay as many dollars as they do today. Man, she's not a fan of inflation, and neither am I. Neither am I. I like when things were cheap and free, but hey, can't have that forever. And the elf, the the el the <laughs> the velvet finch. There you go. <laughs> Couldn't read that word together. The velvet finch doesn't like the Grinch. That's not their favorite movie. Their favorite movie is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And that is one they hold so dear. And for that I say, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. <laughs> okay, goodbye everybody. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.